Yeah, they didn't even win that lawsuit, so I don't know if it would work. I don't know. It should. It's Just weird. That hawk too. <laughs> <laughs> I think she should try to merchandise. She, I, should, she just, should try to merchandise. I think she is merchandising. She is merchandising it. It's just, I think she needs to copyright and name brand it or something. You know what I mean? Where she makes money for every time somebody uses it. Right, yeah. Well, well she should definitely try to. I'm not saying she shouldn't try. Because it's huge right now. Fuck, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Like I just said, make your money. Mm-hmm. Get your fucking money made, get, your, dude. get that money while you've got that 15 minutes of fame. No yeah. shit, dude. The hawk to a flamethrower. Let's do you it. You live the rest of your life off of that 15 minutes of fame. Shit. That's you, what I said. I was like, If you did dude. it right, like, you take that money and then did you, you like, have invest you it wisely full, and do it. Have you seen the full interview? I have not seen no. the full interview. I've been Literally, it's just her and this other girl, and he's trying to get the other girl's number, and, uh, like, she's running around like a jackass, because I'm pretty sure she's half lit. <laughs> and then... She comes, she's like, something about, like, favorite sex position or something like that. And she, she's like, well, you got to talk to my girl about that. And she comes over and she's like, she just randomly says, like, you got to, you got to kind of, like, hawk to her. You got to spin on that thing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what that the fuck? Was, uh, one thing that you can do in bed to drive yeah. your man crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. And she's like, oh, you got to give him the old hawk to her and spit on that thing. Oh, Wow. <laughs> She okay, definitely seemed man. like the type of person that I could probably have fun partying with. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, dude. She's a, like, or she, get, might, or right. she might get on your fucking Here's nerves. Here's what you got to do. Just give Cheryl, like, all of the drinks and just sit back and watch. Yeah. That's all you got to yeah. do. <laughs> just don't watch give her tequila. <laughs> yeah. Because okay, she might done. actually try to spit no on more. you. <laughs> no more. Okay, we're done. Just watch. Well, you remember you remember the, uh, the college mom and daughter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, football or whatever it was sports and, yeah sports, yeah, sports no. where she pulls that fucking broccoli out of her pocket uh-huh. yeah. yeah yeah i remember that did you ever see that video? i think i did yeah yeah i remember a girl pulling broccoli out of her pocket. yeah Walked she's like she's like sports go sports yeah she loves sports and she loves broccoli <laughs> <laughs> stupid people are dumb <laughs> But then again, those are the type of people that those are the type of people that you. Down. But those are the type of people you look at the world and say, "Man, I'm glad I'm alive today." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, to see this dumb shit. Yeah, because like they just like I don't know if they're being dumb or if they are dumb. Either way, they're putting a smile on my face. There's so, so much shit in the world that you just shake your head and go, "Ugh, I want to live on another planet." And then some things that you just go, "Okay, you know what? That you know wasn't what? That, that was, was pretty good. fucking great. That was good." <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man. Anyway, welcome back. We are the Bonsai Movie Crew. It's weird how every week the 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 crew changes. Yeah, yeah it's like musical chairs. Well, Jack grew up. Um, <laughs> he's older now, so that's good. Full beard and everything. Yep, grew a beard and everything, <laughs> all in a week. <laughs> he said, "Well, if it's the fly, I'm gonna have to grow up for that one." So here he is. He's all grown up again. It's very mature. Fusion. Yeah, fusion. You fused. <laughs> fused jack with a full-grown man like <laughs> what we did was we just put jack in 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 the tele uh, the telepod with one of jeremiah's beard hairs <laughs> and there you have it it's, now we have full-grown jack <laughs> anyway oh man uh don't forget to check out our socials <sighs> I always got to say these every week. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Don't forget to check out Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And then don't forget to check out our our Discord if you care to, whatever. Let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (sighs) You and Alec kill me on there with those trailers. Man. (laughs) I had a good one too. Know, it, was was like, so funny. it was so funny because he posted it and then you posted it. And we're like, damn it. <laughs> damn you, Alec. You beat me to it. Every time. That's all right. I got him on one today. Uh, it's that new trailer for. It's got Dwayne Johnson and uh, Chris Evans in it. Red. I think it's just called. Red something. Red, red one. A red one. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a Christmas movie with The Rock and J.K. Simmons or. Yeah, J.K. Simmons plays uh, uh, Santa Claus, like a oh. kind of a jacked Santa Claus too. He's like, yeah. it looks pretty good though. I'll have and, to check that one out. Yeah, it looks pretty funny. Not because of The Rock though, but because of everybody else. Yeah. Because let's face it, The Rock's he always plays the same getting, guy. Getting burnt out on him. Yeah, he's the same person in every fucking movie. So mm-hmm. okay, we'll up, lose man. a fight. Although he does get bitch smacked by Krampus. So that's that part was pretty funny in the trailer. 
Anyway, uh, let's get into our creator profile this week. Actually, first, let's hold on. Let's let's ask Eric. What have you been doing, man? Where <laughs> you been? Oh man, so I've been busy with Allie's games. Um, they've been keeping me pretty occupied. Um, pretty much just getting shit done around the house. Allie's games. Just been busy, man. We just want to know why you ain't been here. <laughs> That's why I've been. Really fucking busy. Well, you're letting our fans down, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Those are more important than your daughter. We've been getting phone calls, (laughs) emails. Emails, phone calls. Where the fuck is Eric? I want Eric back on the show or I'm quitting. I'm gone. (laughs) People are saying. (laughs) I was trying, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, we get it. Life happens, man. Life happens. Uh, Anyway, let's get into our creator profile this week. Can anybody guess who the fuck it is? I'm going with Gina Davis. You're going to write down our time. I shouldn't have to remind you, Jeremiah. You've been here long enough, man. <laughs> Your probation period is over. It was like five, <laughs> 506, I think it was. Huh? 506, I think it was. Oh. <laughs> nah, I just put six minutes because then he started talking about your life. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're really not in the creator profile. So, we're back to this shit. He's right. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah. Weird. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, who wants to read? Gina Davis. I can if you want to. You notice how I looked right at you whenever I said it? Nope, I wasn't It's a really up. short one, though. It's not long at all. I couldn't fart, find fart. <laughs> you I fart? Couldn't fart? I couldn't fart hardly anything. I couldn't find hardly anything She's on pretty, her. Yeah, like, like yeah, especially she, here recently. So She don't like being around yeah. the public. Like It's literally like... I don't either. A long paragraph, that's all it is. I don't is. either. I got it. I and I couldn't even, I didn't even find her biography. I had to look on IMDb, so. She's really <clears throat> smart. Yes. That's probably, yeah, I know that, yeah. Oh, her and Jeff Goldberg, yeah. actually. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yes. Well, la de frickin' da! Smart people, who gives a shit? <laughs> As a child, Gina dreamed of being an actress. While in high school, she felt left out and had low self-esteem because at six feet, she was the tallest girl in school. After high school graduation, Gina entered New England College in New Hampshire and then transferred the next year to Boston University, where she majored in drama. In 1977, she left BU and moved to New York to start her career. Her career consisted of sales clerk and waitress. She worked at Ann Taylor, where she eventually rose to Saturday Window Mannequin while trying to get a job with a modeling agency. Eventually signed to the Zoli Agency, she wound up as a model in the Victoria's Secret catalog. Ever vigilant, Sidney Polak was looking for new le- new talent in the catalog when he spotted Gina and her and cast her in Toots- Tootsie. With good reviews, Gina moved to Los Angeles, where she was cast as Wendy in the short-lived but critically acclaimed television ser- television series Buffalo Bill with Dabney Coleman. A starter marriage to restaurant manager Richard Amelo d- dissolved around this time. Her next television appearance was in her series Sarah, which was also good but soon canceled. Gina then returned to the big screen in the below average Transylvania, Transylvania 65,000. Below average? That shit's funny. I liked it. Followed by... Huh? Oh, it's good. It. It's the first one with her and uh, Jeff Goldblum together. Oh, yeah. Uh, followed by the successful Chevy Chase movie, Fletch. From there on, she was on a roll with her second husband, Jeff Goldblum, in the horror remake, The Fly. More successful were Tim Burton's dark comedy, Beetlejuice, and The Accidental Tourist. For the last film, she was the surprise winner of the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. More fun movies followed with The Flying Saucer in the Pool, Earth Girls Are Easy, and Everyone Loves a Clown, Quick Change with Bill Murray. The very successful Thelma and Louise, directed by Ridley Scott, again garnered nominations for the Academy Award. So was she already married to Jeff Goldblum whenever they did... The Fly? uh, No, not The Fly, the... Earth Girls Are Easy. No, they didn't get married until after The Fly. They were dating... They started dating after Transylvania 65,000, and then they were dating through Fly. The Fly, Earth Girls Are Easy. So they were dating during that period. Mm-hmm. Though. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, 
The very successful Thelma and Louise, directed by Ridley Scott, again garnered nominations for the Academy Award and Golden Globe. A League of Their Own with Tom Hanks and directed by Penny Marshall was the turning point as her next film. Hero was only average. Then she married Rennie Harlan and they set up a a production and development company called The Forge. Their first film was Speechless, which flopped at the box office. Undeterred, Rennie decided to film the big-budget Cutthroat Island, starring Gina as pirate leader Morgan, which also flopped. Gina has since starred in the thriller The Long Kiss Goodnight and played Eleanor Little in Stuart Little and Stuart Little 2. She also returned to TV, headlining The Gina Davis Show and Commander-in-Chief. Both shows were canceled after one season, but she won a Golden Globe for the latter in 2008 after being missing from the big screen for some years. Gina ventured to Sydney, Australia, playing the foul-mouthed mother of Harry Cook and Harrison Gilbertson to shoot the dark comedy Accidents Happen in 2009. And that's all they wrote. Hold on to a second. Uh, Everybody's favorite Gina Davis movie or project, whatever. I'll probably say Beetlejuice is mine. Uh, I was going to say Beetlejuice, but... After rewatching this, I'm going with the fly. Her I'm, acting in this was stellar. She was really good in this movie. Um, she broke my heart a few times. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard for me because I really like A League of Their Own, and I really like the fly. The oh yeah, I forgot about, about League of Their Own. Yeah, that was definitely mine. I'm sorry. I yeah. think I'm going to go with the, with the Long Kiss Good Night though because. I love seeing her as a badass, so it's pretty awesome in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the only reason, though, because she's such a badass in that movie. Yeah. If it f- wasn't for that, though, it would probably be a toss-up between A League of Their Own and The Fly. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about A League of Their Own, so yeah, I would have to change mine to be A League of Their Own. And she's pretty great in A League of Their Own, yeah. too. So. A League of Their Own? Yep. Yep. All right. Well, that was fast. We're only 11 minutes in, 12 minutes in, and... and you said you'd like him short. <laughs> Short and stumpy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> oh, this guy's playing with his bike outside. Good times. Always something. Always something. Anyway. Oh man, let's move on. We should here. like come up with something for on Tuesdays when he pisses us off. Something that we could do. Like you need to just like hook connect. up a button. Yeah, like he couldn't right connect here. to us. It's just like a button that we could like throw eggs down <laughs> from somewhere that he wouldn't know where they were coming from or something i don't know eggs are expensive though yeah fuck that. we could all pitch you need to get in. those the the sea horns uh, <laughs> like, put it right air there. horns the big air horn on the, the big the, air horns the big boats put it right there on the side of your house and just put a button so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god Lowest but we hide it somewhere where he doesn't know where it's coming from where the just, fuck is that coming right, from behind a bush or something <laughs> Behind a bush. <laughs> no, he, you put it up high. Where he's he pretty hyperactive. He might over the, be. If we did that, he'd probably be over there trying to fight the bush. <laughs> <laughs> At least put a video camera for it. Oh my god, that would be so funny. Like we could have footage of that shit. Like that would just be so funny. <laughs> See your neighbor like, what the fuck? He's just beating the shit out of a bush. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing, man? That's my bush. <laughs> Is this your fucking bush? Are you king of the motherfucking forest? <laughs> that was one of the best parts of that fucking It movie. was. I had to rewind uh, that part so many damn times. I was so fucking laughing. That's one of Jamie asshole. Kennedy's best moments. Yes. One of his best moments. <laughs> Ah, this is a bush. Ah, ah. <laughs> nice pubes. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, <laughs> uh, that was okay. one we should throw in the box. Uh, Harold and Kumargo's white case. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's get into what everybody's been watching. What the hell have you been watching? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, let's start with Eric. This is probably going to take a whole month. Since no, because I'm not going to jot off everything I've watched. I'm just going to name like a few things. Vikings and pirates. No, not this time. <laughs> I did watch a, a, a documentary on Greek mythology, though. That was pretty neat. Um, watched that. Watched uh, The Animal. Um, uh, just watched uh, the new Inside Out with the kids Saturday. Inside Out 2? Yes. Oh. You said the new Inside Out. Like, yeah. They made it's, a, it's a new one. 
Yeah, two. Yeah, it's a new one. <laughs> I'd understand if there was like <laughs> there's, there's six only one of them. Like, one. I don't know what number this one is. Yeah, yeah, it's the second one. Uh, what else did I watch? Um, How did you handle that one? What? <laughs> Something we got on our phones. It could be beep. Mm-hmm. Um, and some little bit of MythBusters. That's about it. I mean, not much. Said I really haven't had time to sit down and watch a lot of shit. So I'm surprised you're here today, honestly. No, I'm back. <laughs> games are done. <laughs> Madison's had games all. I think I've went to like three or four of them. She had a game yesterday. I was like, nah, I'm not going. <laughs> So like, yeah, it's my last game. That's the only reason I'm going. I was like, all right, well, have fun. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, the last, and then last week you didn't go to either of them because it was just too fucking hot. No Dude. doubt. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying inside in my yeah, air conditioning. Last week sucked. It was terrible. We went Tuesday and it was Monday. What the fuck days was it? Monday and Wednesday? I think so. I had something going on Tuesday. What the fuck did I do Tuesday? You I weren't here. I fucking I know, know that. I know. It was Kendra's birthday. It was Kendra's oh, birthday. Yeah, Kendra's yeah. birthday. Oh shit! Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll edit that out. No, that's fine. I I just forgot what the actual. I know day it's fine because she don't listen to our podcast. She does. Oh no, she yeah. She corrects me. She's like, you need to stop mumbling so damn much. In that case, Kendra, I fucking told him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a TikTok out of that. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh, Karen, what'd you watch this week? Family Guy, Kiss the Girls, Black Sheep. Kiss the Girls and Black Sheep. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a bad porno. It does. Kissing the Girls and the Black Sheep. Kiss the Girls and Black Sheep. I said it. No, you didn't. I didn't say every you single said, syllable, said, but I basically <laughs> said it, yeah. What'd you say? Friday the 13th, 4 and 5. Oh, oh you rewatched some of them, mm-hmm. huh? Your fucking nephew. Jack. Huh. It's Jack. He's playing the video game, so now he wants to watch all the fucking movies. It's, she can blame it on he's, him. Was he burnt out on Killer Clowns already? And why? why no, he's, are you he's so obsessed with those movies? I'm not obsessed with the movies. I just like the killing. That's the dumb reason. Half the time, he's not even pointing the knife in the right. Yeah. Way. When it comes to a killer, I like how brutal Jason is compared he's to not, somebody that uses magical powers and dreams. Like okay. This one, fucking slit throat. Just looked like somebody just went like this with. The- to the lipstick. <laughs> that is kind of a. It, it, it was pretty kind of pretty shitty, shitty but you know what? It's my kind of shitty. That's yeah, fine. Hey, everybody! I don't want to hear it out of you two. No, I'm, you guys watch some of the worst fucking movies. Exactly, like, but they're meant Just, to be bad. <laughs> that's true. Damn, she beat my argument. This is an entire <laughs> franchise that is beloved. It, and it's the brutality of Jason. You remember the first movie? When Jason wasn't a killer, yeah. And then when they rebooted the franchise with the that was one, that, that was pretty bad. Jason wasn't the killer again. Weird, weird. <laughs> <laughs> I French. think this, and I will say that with Friday the Thirteenth, I wish that they would remake them and do them the, justice. The new remakes, the new, the new, the first, the, the first remake was good. Yes, with, I with Jared the Padalecki, shit that was good. There was only one. And they need to do the rest of them. Yes. Oh that, yeah, the like remake. That. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. really I good. That one. Yeah. They need to do. They need to do the rest of them and do them justice because make it. It's grittier. a problem. It was. It's. it's <laughs> I know like what we talked about that era. The plots and like, stuff in those, those movies. They're awful. Yeah, like remakes. For me, I guess that's my problem with it. Is that because like it's such a beloved franchise? And like, yeah, it just goes to was an like, anchor bay show like the mother's love for the child and all that stuff. But, but let's let's why, for why, me. Why do we waste so much time? Of our <laughs> she podcast? brought it up. Because I'm talking going to debate it. Friday the Thirteenth. She brought it up, so I'm debating now. But you're That's the one my, talking my, about. My you know, we, we're so we're so like quick. I know, but I don't want to spend this time talking about Friday the Thirteenth. Honestly, I don't care about that franchise that I, much. I don't. Either. But they me, don't either. But you know what? It's for me. It's Jason's killings. And he hasn't been here he's, for it he's, <laughs> he's he's brutal as shit when it comes to killing people. It's fine. It's been so pretty nice though. Like without it. Eric here, we can bash the fuck out of that series, and there's nobody here hey, to argue with us. Hey. The only thing that except I except for Jack a little bit. Yeah. The only thing that I I feel like is that because what's it's such worse? A, what's worse? Texas Chainsaw or Friday the Thirteenth? Friday, Friday the Thirteenth. Texas Chainsaw gets better. Yeah. As it goes, yeah. those movies get better. Yeah. 
And my thing is, is that because it's until the remake, so yeah, yeah, see, no, 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 Jason <laughs> remake. My my only thing is, is like it's such a beloved franchise, and so many people love it so dearly. And why? And and so they they need they need to go back. They need to remake these things. And they need to do it justice, dude. Fucking so that it makes sense. Spears a dude through a bed and fucking breaks his body in half. Come yeah, on now, in like every movie. So, but he's only nine when he died, or twelve, or yeah. some shit. And yeah. he's like eight feet tall. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Mutations from a lake. I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you make the most sense, and you weren't even writing the the plots. That's the most yeah. coherent one I've heard. Mutations from the lake. There, there, go, there, there it been is. Toxic waste. Yes. In the yeah, lake. that's what it was. That. All right. Thank you for explaining somebody it. Somebody turned into somebody a can. Somebody made it. Somebody. Somebody explained it to me finally. Yeah. One of the counselors turned into a can. Also. Huh? A talking can. A talking can. No, that was in. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wet hot American sun. Yeah. <laughs> it was. He was uh, a vegetable. can of mixed vegetables. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you ever seen that? No, uh, not for a long time. And a uh, stabler. Humps the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It has been so long From since SVU. I've only seen it once. It's Christopher funny. Christopher Maloney. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Anyway, is that all you watched? Yep. What about you? Is it the same, same thing? thing? Okay. Uh, so I didn't watch much this week. Beat people <laughs> sleeping <What's> bags. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> me and Jackson are still powering it through Dragon Ball. Is it still weird? Did uh, it, is it getting... It's better Do than it was for the first like Dragon ten Ball. episodes. The original. Dragon so you Ball. did. You were. You were oh, here for it. There's a lot of pervy shit going yeah. on. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. At the beginning, like, with like Masaroshi and shit. Oh yeah. It's fucking. It's so pervy with him, and he's still pervy here and there. But now they've finally gotten like to the martial arts tournament. Yeah. And it's a lot less of that. Like it's more into the martial arts than the yeah, perviness, which but is man, nice. He... I'm like, because honestly, Masaroshi until Dragon Ball Super is really fucking pervy. But at some point in Dragon Ball Super, before the um, battle of the universe or whatever, yeah, um, he he's, he's wards still off women. He st- he wards off women so he can become the A best better fighter fighter that he can be. <laughs> Until he fights, because he all says the women that his only the... weakness is women or whatever. And so young women apparently, yeah. So now even aliens, no, uh, he don't care. Mm-mm. Which no. had the fucking cat in it. It was like Beer, Beerus. Is that his name? Oh, he was the, like a like a Siamese. Oh, cat. you mean like the uh, uh, Egyptian looking dude? Yeah. That's Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, yeah, Super? Okay. yeah. yeah it's Beerus. Yeah, he's like the god of destruction. For is that universe? Oh. We're universe seven. Something like that. Something like that. I don't know if it was an actual thing or if it was just like a meme somebody made. But is there a scene in there where he explains about how he died and he doesn't have to take care of his fucking kids anymore? No. No. Nah. Yeah? Okay. I seen That's something. Probably a meme. Are you talking about Beerus? No, not Beerus. It was. Goku, I think. Yeah, that was a meme. Oh, that's Go a meme. Out. Somebody Goku. died. Goku. Goku dies a, a lot. Yeah. Somebody, whoever died, and then he said like he, he, he didn't have to be a father anymore because he dies. No, he he leaves on purpose to go and fight, hoping that he'll die so he doesn't have to take care of his kids anymore. Like, he's yeah. not a good father. It's oh, a whole that's... thing. Well, hell, they say Piccolo is a better father to Gohan than he was. Because, only yeah. because Piccolo trained yeah. uh, Gohan for the first... He was his first trainer. Yeah. And then... He goes on to be trained, blah, blah, blah. Like, the whole series was supposed to be, like, to launch Gohan to a into, different into, that, into that whole, he was the main hero of the show. Yeah. And Goku was supposed to die. Yeah, it was supposed to be. But then there were people were like, no, we love Goku. Don't kill him. So they brought Goku back. Yeah. yeah Goku's kind of a dick. And they kind of left Gohan in the dust. But yeah, this re- recently, shit. though, they've really upped his upped gohan and like powered him up and shit and i'm kind of happy about yeah the newest movie that came out with was a dragon ball super superhero something like that and it's awesome it's a great fucking movie it's really entertaining and it's all about piccolo and gohan pretty much how gohan yeah goku Goku. and vegeta is only in it for like a total of like five minutes yeah so So supposedly having a barbecue (laughs) supposedly go they were pretty much they were on another planet they were off world training. training with beerus and all them and brawly and all that but it was pretty it was really good it was really entertaining yeah supposedly and the animation is fucking a phenomenal yeah supposedly gohan surpassed goku and vegeta that's what they say yeah. but they, but like the last movie the one before that dragon ball super brawly the animation in that was, was fucking phenomenal. amazing that movie was fucking awesome 
me and the kids, me and Jackson especially, have watched that movie probably a fucking dozen times because we just we love the animation in that movie. Uh, I do anyway. He just loves it because of all the fighting. Yeah. But it's it's awesome. It's an awesome movie. You remember how the old Dragon Ball Z uh, shows would like have all the old rock, you know, mid nineties rock playing <laughs> yeah. during the fights. <laughs> Badass. <laughs> like Jesus Christ. Like disturbed it went was heavy in there. Too, like, yeah, there was some disturbed in there. It was heavy. Uh anyway, I watched that. I've been watching that. And then we watched the newest episode of The Boys. Um the show's kind of I know it talk like this show talks a lot on political sides or not political but like social commentary and things like that. But this this one has been like very fucking political with like I don't know what they think I think they perceive as left and right and you got your conservatives and your and your republic or your liberals and it's very it's very heavy-handed with that stuff this this season and it's kind of boring. It's still got some of its shock factor, but this might be the worst season so far. So far. Anyway, because I'm like, I'm just, like, I, I still like it. It's still good, but I'm still like, ugh. Like, I hate it when they I, I just, I don't like the political stuff, man. Leave no. it out of my fucking entertainment, man. So, I think I told you that we kind of stopped watching some stuff back in the day, like when the election and stuff was going on because of that. You just, you get tired of seeing it, man. You get tired of people trying to push, push their, their ideas and things like that in your face. And Well, we were watching Sunny. Back when that was going on, too, Sonny had just come out with a new season, and there was an episode where it was, like, very heavy-handed in the episode, and we were like, not you, too. And that then, was the first and, episode yeah, of one of the seasons. Yeah, and that we were like, not you, too. What and season then was it? I don't remember. Uh, it was not. Wow, well, what are they up to now? I don't remember. They're up to, like, season 15 or something, aren't they? So it would have been, like, 10 or 9 10 or, or 11, something. maybe. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. But we were like, not you too, but the end is, they weren't. Oh. So, like, the whole season, or the whole episode, we were like, mm-hmm. and then the end, we are like, you got us. <laughs> you got us. I don't mind that, but I just, this season so far has been very much that. And I'm like, God damn it. So, I'm not, I'm not very happy with this season so far. Like, a lot of it's cool and fun, and a lot of it's still... Like, Homelander still, like, has me on the edge of my seat all the time because who's he going to fucking kill next? Who's yeah. – you never know What's what he's he going to do. do. Yeah, because he's a pure psychopath. Um, I don't know. And then we watched uh, that movie on Netflix, uh, Trigger Warning, the one with Jessica Alba. Oh, I heard – yeah, yeah, that was the one that – That was the one that I, po- that I posted yeah. that the lead singer of Otep had wrote in the short story. Yeah. And – I guess one of the writers had stolen her story or Netflix had stolen it or something. And uh, they, like the reason why she knew that was because it's the same story. It has the same, they even kept the, her main the character, character, her name. And they name. kept like the, the setting and something like that. Yeah. yeah. And they changed some things about it, but um, there was, she, she said she was pretty pissed off because they had stolen her story. But um, to be honest with you, it's not that good of a movie. So I wouldn't be all that upset about it. Uh, Netflix is kind of, well, it's not even that it's a predictable movie or anything. Like the story itself is a, is fine, but like just, the way they it's directed choppy, it, it's clunky. The storytelling it is clunky, and I'm like, and it's not even and Jessica Alba's fine. She does a great job. She she actually sells it as like this badass bitch. You know what I mean? Um, but it's so boring and drug out. Like it's it's an hour and forty five minutes. It should have been an hour and like fifteen or twenty minutes. So the it sing- feels so long. The singer's probably more pissed off that they took they her, story her story and they, <laughs> they tore No, her she apart. hasn't even watched it. She said she refuses to watch the movie. She said, I, I won't be watching the movie. And and uh, she already canceled her. She's like, I canceled my Netflix account a long time ago. She said, I won't give them any more of my money or time. And I don't blame her. I mean, mm. and she's, she actually, it's got her so frustrated that she said, I'm, I'm beginning to rethink her art. She said, I'm beginning to rethink my art and where I stand with it. And if, even if, if I even want to do art anymore, she goes, because that's messed up that somebody can just steal your shit from you like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I was like, welcome to the fucking world we live in yeah. where anything on the internet, anybody can just pick it up and copy it. And, and, and especially if you don't have own. a copyright of it. 
yeah, I mean, it sucks, but that's the world we live in, you know, where it shit is easily stolen on the internet. But the movie itself could have been better. Um, there were some parts in it that I was like, oh, how dumb, um, like some of the effects. But then there were a lot of parts in, the, in it where I was like, oh, that was a good effect. But like some like the story itself was just so choppy and clunky. The editing was clunky. It had a few good characters in it that I really liked. Jessica Alba's character was really good. Um, I thought she was great. And it was nice to see her in a movie again. Because I don't know when the last time I saw her in anything. Yeah. Um, the Her and a couple of the main characters were fine. Uh, what was his name? Michael. Uh, he was in um, 16 Candles and shit like that. Uh, oh. He was in B, uh, Edward Scissorhands. What was his name? Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony yeah. Michael Hall, yeah. He's in it as the main bad guy, essentially. Um, but it's it's not bad. It's okay. Uh, the Rotten Tomato score is like a twenty nine percent. Yeah, I see. That's where article, I'm. Yeah. That's about where I'd put it. An article about earlier. Thirty percent sitting in the low twenties. Yeah, it's not something I'd ever waste my time on watching again. I'm just no? disappointed because I feel like they wasted a lot of money and a good couple of actors on on a movie that could have been a lot better. I feel like she might be just sitting back and smiling then about it, kind of like, uh-huh. It's well, flopping. that's what people are saying, too. Like, oh, man, the movie was would have been better. Jessica Alba was great, but the movie was just dog shit. And she was. She was great in the movie, and I thought she did fine. But then some of the actors and stuff just just weren't there for it. You know what I mean? Like, they were just like, you could phoning tell. it in. Not even that they were phoning it in. They just weren't good actors. Yeah. So, but, yeah. It was dog shit. It was wasting my time. So, there. If I had to rate it, I'd give it a three. <laughs> Have you ever seen the abridged version of Dragon Ball? No, everybody keeps telling me to watch it. Oh, you need to watch it. Oh, it's pretty funny. It's fucking hilarious. There's, a, you know, when Cooler fights Vegeta for the and Goku, the same Meta Cooler or whatever, when he's metal. I don't think that's in Dragon Ball Z. You sure? I'm pretty sure that's Dragon Ball GT or some shit. People Man, talk about was, Dragon Ball Z. I was like, Cooler's not even in Dragon Ball GT or Dragon Ball Z. I thought he was. But anyways, no. there's a part where he like kicks Vegeta. He might be in like a Dragon Ball Z movie of some kind. Yeah. But those aren't canon to the series. Well, so. he kicks uh, Vegeta in the nuts like multiple times. And like Vegeta's like, why does he keep kicking me in the dick? You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then it goes to a cutscene where uh, Goku's fighting Broly and uh, Broly punches him in the dick. And then Vegeta looks at Goku. He's like, "Not so funny now, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shit in that abridged version. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, I think that's all I watched this week, though. I don't think I really watched anything else. I pl- started playing Kingdom Hearts again because um, so I, I bought the entire series on Steam for the seven. It was on sale because they just put it on Steam for like seventy bucks. So I bought that shit because it comes with all three of the games or whatever the whole series. And so I'm like. Yeah, so I started over on I one, and I'm kind of regretting it because I've beat one several times, and I should just go to jump to two because I think I've only beat. I don't even know if I've even beaten two. I know I've gotten most of the way through two, and I don't know if I ever beat it though. And I'm kind of like regretting starting one because it takes four fucking ever to get through. And I'm playing it on normal. As I said, told my brother, I said I should have just played it on easy and been done with it, so I could just run right through the fucking game. Because I don't want to go to two without playing one. And and I've never played three, so. But that's what I've been doing. If you guys know what Kingdom Hearts is, it's like a mixture of Disney and uh, fan, Final Fantasy. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. There's no, that's not what it's like. That's what it is. It's Same got game. Final Fantasy characters and Disney characters in it. Yeah. Are you just going to play one, two, and three? I'm going to play. So the, the series came with, the whole thing came with 1.5 and 2.5. And then it's got all the little games that were out for like Game Boy Advance and all that shit. Yeah. I'm not going to play those. I'm going to play 1.5, 2.5, um, and then there's a 2.8 after. It's a final mix. Yeah, it's, it's like a final, a final mix. mix. And then there's three. So I'm going to play through all those. I don't think 2.8 is that long. I think my brother said that it's just mostly cinematic shit. So I don't think there's much to I don't know how much is there. I've never played 2.8, whatever it is. So I'll play 2.5, 1.5 and 2.5, and then I'm going to go into 2.8, and then I'll play 3. Yeah, I got everything on uh, PS4 except for part 3. 
that's what I so I've got that on my PS5. I've got the the bundle that comes with all the two one point five through two point five or whatever. I've got all that. That's that's the same bundle. You get that exact same thing in the Steam package. But with whenever you buy the Steam package, like if you buy them all together, you get that set plus the two point eight and three. But you can go in and just individually buy the two point one point five two point five set that comes with all those games in it. So I just but I bought them all because I'm like I'm, it's on my Steam. Like I don't ever play on my PlayStation anymore, so I always just play on my computer. I don't even know why I have a PlayStation anymore. I guess because we watch Netflix on it <laughs> and watch Blu-rays. So it's a streaming machine now. <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. Well, I can't say it. Jackson still plays on my PlayStation. He plays Fortnite on it, and he was playing Dragon Ball Z, uh, the game or whatever. Dragon Ball. What the fuck is that game? Fighter Z or whatever, which is a fun fighting game. He's playing on it last night, and every once in a while I'll play other games on there, but then I have to go through and delete them because he's taking up too much storage space. And Yeah. And then today I came home, and he was playing, or yesterday I came home, and he was playing Sound Minecraft. Familiar? Yeah, we had that conversation last week mm-hmm. with grown-up Jack. <laughs> well, oh, little kid. Well, little kid little Jack. Kid Jack. Little, Jack. little kid Jack. Not grown-up Jack. Anyway, that's all I watched. Um, that's it. Let's move on here. Let's get into our goddamn movie. Let's talk about the movie. All right. Um, so this week we watched The Fly from 1986. Karen, we did. give us that plot synopsis. Sure enough. When Seth Brundle makes a huge scientific and technological breakthrough in teleportation, he decides to test it on himself. Unbeknownst to him, a common house fly manages to get inside the device and the two become one. Uh, one hour and 36 minutes rated R Jeff Goldblum as Seth Brundle, Gina Davis as Veronica. I just got a weird last name. John Getz as Stathis Borans. And that's as far as I'm going. That's pretty much all that's in the movie. Those three people are pretty much the only, and then the hooker. It's so interesting because you have three people in one room 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very, and it's funny because like the main, like the only real setting of this movie is his apartment, mm-hmm. which is a great setting, don't get me wrong, but it's not even an apartment really, I guess it's more of like a loft, loft, a loft. in a factory or some shit. Well, like, they, they like in New York, they'll do that a lot of times, but usually they'll have like some renovations, but they'll take old warehouses and stuff and they'll turn them into apartments. Um, usually they'll do some renovations, but there's also people that will actually go and buy places like that and they'll just take one piece of it and they'll do something like what he did. Kind of like what they did in Saw. Yeah. Like, I remember the doctor's apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, we're going to spoil the shit out of this movie and I hope you guys have seen it. Because uh, if not, then, well, I'm sorry. Too bad. <laughs> you have to just go watch the movie. Oh, we were supposed to watch it? I thought we were supposed to read about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got the cliff notes? <laughs> yeah, I got the cliff notes. Uh, let's go around the table. Would you watch? Would you recommend? Let's start with Jeremiah. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. I'm going to say yes and yes, too. This movie's fucking amazing. Yes and yes. I was going to come back and be a dick, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just for that, I will be a dick now. <laughs> it's sharp. Just calm down. <laughs> yes and yes. Just Took wanted, you long to, <laughs> well, he just I, wanted to make us I all like up the suspense. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted all of us to be like, eh, motherfucker. motherfucker, I gotta <laughs> <all> stab you. <laughs> oh, fuck you up. I'll throw this drink at you. I got another one under my table. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um see he's quick with him. I'm like it's because we have no idea where the I know. I know what number one is right off the bat. So, yeah. all right, uh, Seth Brundle, played by Jeff Goldblum, a brilliant but eccentric scientist, meets Veronica Quaif. I know it's weird, right? Quaif. Quaif. Is it Quaif? I think it's Quaif. Quaif. Okay. Quaif. Uh, played by Gina Davis. He might as well have been playing himself, really. Yeah, for sure. I, anyway, I mean, he was, wasn't he? Right. Right. <laughs> 
uh, a journalist for uh, Particle Magazine at a Meet the Press event held by Bartok Science Industries, the company that provides funding for Brundle's work. Seth shows Veronica a project that will change the world, a set of telepods that allow instantaneous teleportation of an object from one pod to another. Veronica eventually agrees to document Seth's work, although... Is the wall cool? Oh, you're touching. I was just like, he was. He likes the wall. <laughs> no, I'm trying to crack my back. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I liked how um he called them telepods, and then she still didn't understand that they were tele teleporting things. Yeah, it had to be explained. And she works for a science magazine. Yeah. 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 Particle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he said, yeah. telepods, and then she's like. What, what do they do? <laughs> yeah, what what do they do? And he, I'm like, hmm? You work for a science magazine. It was funny to me when she called him designer phone booths. So designer that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, shit, get off my phone. Oh, when he, when he said, um, he, she, he thinks you're a con man, and he was like, excellent. <laughs> yeah. There were a few moments in this movie that I'm like, I kind of made me giggle. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the part. The other part that made me laugh out loud was when he was like, I forgot to tell you I live with my mother too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that shit was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. This is my mother. Yeah, I live with my mother too. <laughs> uh, Veronica uh, eventually agrees to document Seth's work. Although telephones can transport, telephones can transport inanimate objects. What? Although telephones can transport inanimate objects perfectly, they do not work correctly on living things. Yeah, he said that in the movie. Telepods, not they said telephones, I think. Yeah, he said telephones. Although telephones can transport inanimate oh, objects. No, yeah, he was talking about the telepods. Yeah, they messed up. Yeah, that's up. a screw up. That's a yeah, typo. Yeah. Uh, on living things, as is horrifically demonstrated with when a live baboon is turned inside Probably out during an experiment. Them. Technically, it wouldn't be wrong since, you know, they're nice designer phone booths. Right, yeah. right. Well, I, th- I guarantee what was is the autocorrect. Yeah, autocorrect. Probably. Perfrage your shit. They do not work correctly on living things as horrifically. Horrifically demonstrated when a live baboon is turned inside out during an experiment. When Seth and Veronica it's began a, a romantic scene too. yeah like, it is oh. yeah. Uh, Seth and so Veronica be. began a romantic relationship, and their first sexual Poor encounter monkey. inspires Seth, who sets about successfully reprogramming the telepod computer to cope with living flesh. Yeah. Uh, one magic word, cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely Jeff Goldblum. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, Seth <laughs> thinks your comment excellent. Excellent. <laughs> uh, then, uh, um, Brendel Fly. <laughs> <laughs> he's like ranting to the monkey when he's all jealous. Like he's in there ranting and you think he's just talking to himself. And then he, he shows the chair and there's the monkey sitting there listening to him. <laughs> and then he's like swatting at that fly. It's so funny watching that monkey swat at the fly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what happened to that monkey? Probably got, well, one? they said he was going to be sent out for testing. Oh, did, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sure he did send him out. Um, yeah, because he was gone after a while. Mm-hmm. He fucking jetted. He was probably like, fuck this. I'm out of here. Dude's nuts. Dude's yeah. spitting on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remember the time he chose to be the top scientist in his field? <laughs> what? The SNL skit with Harry Carey. He asked him if he would want mad cow disease or be the top scientists in this field in this this movie he chose mad cow (laughs) (laughs) top scientist you never saw that there's a there's an snl skit where it's i think um, we talked about this yeah it's will ferrell and jeff goldblum it's the only time i've ever seen him break and he's he's he's, (laughs) will ferrell is harry carey and jeff goldblum is playing a scientist and there's one part where uh harry carey is like if you had, if you could choose between Mad Cow, is that the one where he's like shaking like this? Yeah, yeah. he's like shaking. And hey, like, yeah, hey. hi. <laughs> hi. Yeah. He's like, if you could have Mad Cow or be the top scientist in your field, you know, which would you choose? And he's like, 
of course I would choose to be the top scientist in my field. My, and he's like, oh, good. I was worried you'd pick Mad Cow. <laughs> my favorite part is when he looks at him and he's like, would you eat the moon if it's made out of spare ribs? Yeah, and, and he won't Jeff answer. Jeff Goldham's like, yeah, he's like, he's like what? it's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah. Would he's you like, eat just, the moon just if it's yes, made out of spare ribs? Just say yes and we'll move on. <laughs> I would. And I'd wash yeah. it down with a nice tall Budweiser. Hell, I'd have seconds. <laughs> It's got to be one of my favorite skits ever. <laughs> I've seen I've seen Will Ferrell play that. I might have even seen that skit. You should before. you should watch the one with Jeff Goldblum. It's literally the funniest thing ever. Just to see him break. <laughs> yeah, he breaks over and over and Jeff over. Yeah. Yes, yes, he breaks over because he's and so over lost. It. He's just like yeah, because you can what? tell that like probably because he had no idea what the skit was. Yeah, you can about. you can tell that it's like unscripted or he's, he's going like off. hey, just go in and play along. Okay, Yo, yeah, it's he, it's either he's going off script. Or they had no script because he's just whatever he's saying. Goldblum had no clue. <laughs> Didn't know how to react. Yeah, like you can see it all over his face, and he's like, "Of course, I would choose to be the top scientist in my Bad field." People. All right, uh, flush with, uh, with except in this one. Okay, so Seth then <laughs> succeeds in teleporting a second baboon uh, with no apparent harm. Flush with a su- with success. Uh, Brundle wants to spend a romantic evening with Veronica, but she suddenly departs before they can celebrate. Brundle's judgment uh, soon becomes impaired by alcohol and his paranoid... He was drinking champagne. How drunk could he have been? And we've already established he doesn't get out much and he probably doesn't have much of a tolerance. True. Um, and his paranoid fear uh, that Veronica is secretly rekindling her relationship with her editor and former lover... Sta- Stathis Borans. Stathis. Stathis. He's, he starts out like such a creep. Mm-hmm. Man. But I think he does it on purpose. I think his character is to do it on purpose. Well, like, it, he's it, supposed to do it on purpose. Like he, I think that's his way of fucking around. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it, like at first it seems like that's like he's just a jer- he's just that's who he is. He's an asshole. Yeah, but then you realize I think later on in the as it goes on, I think you realize, wow, this guy actually. No, you, you, you absolutely, absolutely, he is not. Yeah, he's, he's a good person. Yeah, you, you find out he's not such a bad dude. No, he really isn't. Because you, th- well, th- that's the thing that throws throws you off in this movie is like, I think Rundle, I, I Rundle think... is supposed to be the pro- protagonist of this movie, mm-hmm. and he ends up becoming the antagonist of the movie. You get this flip flop. You get this flip flop between these two characters, but you spend more time with Brundle, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I think it's one of those things where it's like at the beginning, he was heartbroken. And so on top of being heartbroken and on top of already having sort of an abrasive personality, you get those two things combined and he's, he comes off like an asshole. And I don't think that that's really who he is. Right. You know? And so later you actually get to see who he is. That's how I interpret right. it. The only questionable thing in this movie that he really does is the part in the department store, mm-hmm. and he's kind of like breaking down like a fucking psycho. Mm-hmm. Like, this... but again, I think that's heartbreak. I think that he's yeah. he's legit like sad about losing her. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, he's not a bad character though. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's a bad character. He, he lends to it very much. So, um, uh, in reality, Veronica has left to confront Borens uh, about a veiled threat of his. Um, of his spurred by his romantic jealousy of Brundle to publish the telepod story without her consent. A drunk and jealous Brundle decides to teleport himself as revenge for Veronica's seeming infidelity, but a common housefly slips into the pod unseen. The teleport. So the only thing that I have a gripe about this movie is the fact that there is a living fly when it is obviously. Like winter. <laughs> That's... It, is, it is obviously winter in in wherever this is, whatever city this is in. And there's a fucking fly. When do you ever see flies during the winter? They're either hibernated or dead. So, Well, if you want to get into the scientific inconsistencies, let's talk about all of the things that are in the air in there with him. Right, I get that. You know. I mean... I'm not really concerned about the fly. <laughs> That's the thing is like, if you think about it in a situation like this, he should have fucking known better. Like, dude, you are a scientist. I don't care how drunk you are. There is no way in hell 
you as a scientist would do this. Mm-mm. I don't care how drunk you are. With you're the, not that dumb. Especially without a person controlling it on from on the outside. Anything. I, I mean, mean, the fact that he got in there to begin with without doing proper tests on the monkey first or knowing anything or at least at the very least sterilizing there should be a sterilized like in that situation a sterilization sequence within the chamber before it teleports. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have air, there should be nothing in there yeah. because there's there's bacteria the alone in air. You know, and a bacteria is a living thing. So bacteria itself can become fused with you because it's a living thing. And not to mention pigs would be the most best consistency for a human no just their skin that's well, that's just their skin yeah but my biggest problem is blowing us up <laughs> you know my problem is is like there's this thing too you know like the reason that inanimate objects are like, such oh a good my thing God, he's he's sending us saw memes <laughs> want to play a game hello i want to play a game <laughs> for fuck's sake alec we're not doing saw this week we're not doing saw man what are you talking about watch us pull it though is that on the Discord? It'll be the last one. True. No, it's no, it's text message. Text messages. Are you not? Oh, you're not in this oh. group. No. This is what happens when you dip out for a couple <laughs> like, for a month. I was, I was I was like, why the fuck is everybody's phone going off? That's what I was like. Why is my phone blowing up? But and, like you know, they they he talks it's okay, about inanimate Alec, I'm objects. Not special. <laughs> Have you seen him? Oh, you guys read the zoo. Yeah, together. we read the zoo together. God damn it, Alec! We're doing a podcast. <laughs> Do you want to be called? This is how you get called. We should, Karen, call him. I'm you sorry. call him. No, you call him. Why? He's, he keeps sending me fucking. <laughs> okay. What is with all the saw memes? <laughs> What's so funny? It's funny <laughs> to me. Because you see, I don't have a problem with the saw memes. <laughs> you play a game. You should call him and do it. You've got the man voice. Say, want to play a game? No, I don't want to call him and do that. Well. You call him. I can't do it. I don't have a man voice. I can't go, want to play a game. <laughs> sounds <laughs> stupid when I do that. It's not like you got a sore throat. That's what I'm saying. It sounds stupid <laughs> if I try to do it. <laughs> Are you, you're not calling him? No. Okay, I can't fine. do it. Sorry, Alec. We're not calling you. I can't do a man voice. I'm trying to. A man? I can't do a man voice. I can't voice. do a man voice. Just Facebook message or video call. Nah, fuck it. Sorry, man. We're moving on. We love you, Alec. I'm saying inanimate objects obviously are easier to do because they don't have any kind of interaction with bacteria or anything like that. We have bacteria in our bodies. Right, exactly. Like, that's But the thing why. is, is whenever... Essentially what it's doing is it's fusing... It's taking two things and essentially fusing them together. It's like taking two colors and mixing them together. You're going to get one color. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening, and and that's pretty much what happens to his DNA. Mm -hmm. You're fusing the genetic code. Yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, it's why it's science fiction. But well, the biggest thing about it is the the genetic code. That there's so little of a genetic code there. Should it matter? Would it have an effect on his genetic code? Well, that's the that's the thing with DNA. It doesn't matter how small the animal is. Genetic codes can be ginormous. The very. I mean, I mean, like you talk about um, bananas. Bananas, for example, have almost a bananas and pajamas. Yeah, bananas and pajamas have almost. Well, is that where like pajamas and bananas, like their genetic code was mixed, and they got bananas and pajamas? Yeah. Or like. Man, that's wild. <laughs> Bananas have almost wow. an identical genetic code to us. <laughs> what Teletubbies weren't nothing more than like, I don't know, a fucking, like a Furby mixed with Satan. You put those two together, that's what you got was a fucking Teletubby. With a doll face. Yeah. But they it's they, they have the same genetic code almost. It's almost identical to us. So but just like the baby's you son. You look at our genetic code and it's almost infinity took long. Took the baby in the sun and you got that genetic code. Tell the dub he's the baby's son. Sorry. We're... It's the same thing. Just, <laughs> I'm saying. I'm just trying to figure out how you get certain things like SpongeBob SquarePants. You took a sponge and, and a little boy and you mix their genetic code. You got SpongeBob. 
Technically, that's just a sea sponge. With He's not mouth. a sea sponge. His parents are sea sponges. What about Mr. Krabs? He's took a crab, a crab He's and a then crab. You genetic code with a He's greedy a ass crab. salesman. Here's what happens when you mix a crab with Donald Trump. He's just a crab that can talk and knows what money is. <laughs> really? We're way off subject. We're way off subject, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway. My messenger's going God off. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking Alec again. Now he's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I don't know. <laughs> he created no, a he whole new group. <laughs> we didn't lose audio. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> he created a whole new group. For what? <laughs> about to dump your beer down the fucking drain. <laughs> Yeah, that shitty beer you like. Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking Ryan Geist. Yes. Don't dump my beer down the drain. I'm gonna play a game. <laughs> I don't even see it. You don't see it? Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna call him. Hold on, apparently I'm calling everybody. Hold on. Oh, that's everybody. I don't want to do that. Ah, I don't want to talk to you. I don't know you. I, don't I know almost you. called everyone. It he showed up. I know. I, I, I know. instantly I exited I'm that. I'm here. I didn't know I was going to do that if I fucking... All right, we're just going to call him. <laughs> Chats. Maybe, if it's going to rain. Oh, there it is. Does he not get service where he's at? Yeah. I think he's got wi Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Let's try that again. He's too busy sending gifts. He is. What what's up with the drinks in the sink? Those are That's his my beer. beer. That's been there for like three oh. weeks. It's been there since they moved in. <laughs> are you happy? Are you gonna fuck me up? So what's this game you wanna play? <laughs> Well, you see, I got those uh, beers. Twiddle the diddle. Sink, and, uh, you, you get to decide whether you can come pick up your beers or you can go down the garbage disposal side or the right side. Well, hold on a minute now. You can't put your <laughs> hostage disposal. a beer. <laughs> I want to do whatever I want. This is my game. <laughs> can't hold beer hostage. Just not could, fucking cool. Just ill advised. <laughs> He's like, I can do whatever I want. This is my game. <laughs> oh, man. So why are you holding my beer hostage, dude? Because um, uh, you haven't come to get it. So I figure if, uh, you know, giving you ample time, and if I, I have to play rough, you know. so <laughs> to play rough. Then, the next one's going to be sending you one with a noose in it. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. Dude. Holding the beer up by a noose. By a noose. <laughs> you want to play a game? <laughs> right over the garbage disposal. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> lowering down. Like that, so. Karen's over here, like, oh, I, I don't mind if we watch Sog. And I'm like, fuck you, Karen. <laughs> yeah. hey, I that get that note. whole Cooper smile every time we, we draw it. Like, I got more games. <laughs> Did you watch The Fly this week, Alec? Uh, did I watch The Fly this week? No, I did not. Still unpacking. Have, you, have you seen The Fly? No, I, I have. And you know what? I I enjoyed it. I felt that it was, you know, for, for that time, especially, like, even now watching it again, just thinking about it, like, it doesn't, like, Fly 2 to me was really cheesy and... You know, it, it, it had its moments, but Fly 2 with Jeff Goldblum, I, I really think any movie with Jeff Goldblum, you can't go wrong. So, you know, I I, I would recommend watching all that good stuff. So, uh, Out of 10, what do you give it? I would give it a 7.5. Okay, that's fair. Solid. All right. All right. All right, we're going to get back to our, our podcast now. Please don't kill my beer. Oh. Okay, well, you know, I, I already told you, so. No. <laughs> You've been warned. Well, well, right. Maybe we can do our cookout this weekend. Yeah, well, uh, talk, 
amongst the people, and uh, we'll figure something out. All right. Birthday so. party. All right, guys. Barrett's birthday party this week. Yeah, Barrett's birthday party. All right, we'll talk to you later. Everybody tell bye. Tell, tell Alec bye. 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 <laughs> See you, bud. All right. So he's not. So I think he's gonna let my beer live another day. I think so. We're yeah. we're going over there tomorrow. I can probably grab it if I remember. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, I was reading. <laughs> you were reading something. Yeah, something. All right. Come on. No. All right. Put that cookie down. Put the cookie down. Come on. What are you doing? I gotta find my spot again. All right. In reality, Veronica has left to confront Brorans about a veiled threat of his uh, to publish the telepod story without her consent. A drunk and jealous Brendel decides to teleport himself reve- uh, as revenge for Veronica's seemingly or seeming infidelity. But a common housefly slips into the pod unseen. The teleportation is successful, and Brendel emerges from the uh, receiving pod, seemingly normal. Uh, shortly after his teleportation, uh, Seth begins to exhibit what at first appear to be uh, beneficial effects of the process, such as increased uh, strength, stamina, and sexual potency. Um, however, he soon becomes arrogant and violent and eventually realizes that something went wrong when his fingernails begin falling off. Brundle Did you go chip. to a doctor after that? I would have went to a doctor as soon as I started seeing spots on my face. Right. I mean, seriously. Like, he doesn't... He just gets mad. Yeah, like... All of the things that's happened... But he also said that he didn't want to be a lab rat being poked. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was way later, though. That was later, I guess, yeah. Like, he could have maybe at some point... Like, they mm. What would they have done, though? Would there have Something. been a way to reverse the effect? I think that I would think that if I bet he was smart enough that if he would have thought about it, he could have reversed the effect. He, he could have. That was the whole point. Like the the telepods, if he found <clears throat> humans to put in there to take the fly genes and make him less fly, that was the whole point. But I that's think what that they, he, that's what actually happens in the second one. I think one. that the telepod would have uh, read the two different genetic types. And they, it could have split those two genetic types up again. You know what I mean? Well, that's, I don't know what the effects of that would have been because that's know. what he that's what he was doing at the end was it, if he could find humans to put in the other pod and combine to get rid of some of the gen, the genetics of the fly. And that's actually what happens in the second one with his son. Yeah, his son has the same genes or whatever, and yeah. they they come out later and they put like the asshole guy in there. I remember that because yeah. the son survives. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so that that's the that's the that's the answer. That's the key. But he waited too long, first of all, and I mean, go to some prisons and get some assholes and stick them in there. I mean, or find you know some what fucking I mean? like, dirt bags off the street. Then. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people out there that I don't want to say deserve it, but you know, don't do it to deserve your girlfriend. It. Don't do it to your girlfriend. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Don't um, wait until you're damn near. A fly. Yeah, right. Brendo Brendo checks his computer records and discovers that the telepod computer confused by the presence of two separate life forms in the sending pod merged them with merged him with uh, the fly at a molecular level, molecular genetic level. Over the next few weeks, Brendo be, uh, continues to deteriorate, becoming progressively less human in appearance. He theorizes that he is slowly becoming a hybrid creature that is neither human nor insect, uh, which the doomed Seth begins referring to as Brendelfly, which is fucking great. (laughs) Uh, He has started to exhibit fly-like characteristics, such as vomiting uh, digestive enzymes onto his food to dissolve it and the uh, ability to cling to walls and ceilings. Brendo beca- comes to realize that he is losing his human reason and compassion and that he is now beca- being driven by primitive impulses he cannot control. Uh, attempting to find a cure for the condition, Brendo installs a fusion program 
uh, into the telepod computer to possibly dilute the fly genes in his body with more pure human DNA. Uh, to her horror, Ver Veronica learns that she is pregnant by Seth and she cannot be sure if the child will, was conceived before or after his fatal transportation or teleportation. Uh, the rapidly deteriorating Brundle abducts Veronica from a clinic before she can get an abortion uh, and begs her to carry the child to term since it could potentially be the last remnant of his un uh, untamed, untainted humanity. Veronica sadly <clears throat> refuses after or, or refuses afraid that the child will be a hideous mutant. Meanwhile, Stathis Borens, Boren, whatever, uh, breaks into Brundle's lab with a shotgun and uh, comes to Veronica's rescue, but is seriously injured and nearly killed by the almost fully transformed Brundle, who dissolves Boren's left hand and right foot with his corrosive vomit drop enzyme. So that shit was awesome whenever he did that to him. I mean, I, I kind of liked the dude by the end of the movie, but oh. like, but like, that scene where he vomits on him and shit, his secretion secreting a vomit is fucking amazing in this movie. Like this is one thing that like, uh, one thing that, um, what's his face? Uh, Cronenberg does, does right. Dude is just great gore and effects. Like he, he don't, he's, he is a shy away from like trying to gross you. The, the fuck effects out. team was actually the same ones that did gremlins. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I thought the effects from this was phenomenal. Chris Wallace. Yeah. They look awesome. Uh, Brundle then reveals his desperate last ditch, uh, plan to Veronica. He will use the three telepods, the third pod being an original prototype to fuse himself, Veronica and their unborn child together into one entity. So they can be the ultimate family. Does he really need the other pod? He can't, they just all crawl onto the one pod and you know what I mean? Like, why does he need the third pod? I don't know. I never, I didn't understand that. Because he was fused with the, the fly, fly just one with pod. just one pod. Like, why do they need the other pod? I don't understand why that was necessary. I think that um, because they're trying to dilute the effects, perhaps. Maybe. Because, like, the way that I understand, they're trying to get rid of the, the fly fl genes, right? So maybe he was trying to ch teleport... Those fly genes into the other the other pod. Yeah, like that's the way I understand it, and maybe I'm understanding it incorrectly. But maybe. I don't know. Like, I think the third pod is for dilution, the mm -hmm. dilution of some of those genes. Okay. I could maybe. be wrong. I was just wondering because I didn't know. Um, to fuse himself, Veronica. Blah blah blah. Okay, Veronica, uh, for uh, frenetic, for frantically. Sorry. Resists Brundle's efforts to drag her into Telepod 1 and then accidentally tears off his jaw, triggering his final transformation into a monstrous combination of man and insect. The Brundle fly. Creature traps... Mostly fly. Mostly fly. Creature traps uh, Veronica inside Telepod 1, then steps into Telepod 2. However... The wounded Stathis manages to sever the power cables connected to Veronica's telepod with a with a shotgun, allowing Veronica to escape unharmed. Breaking out of his pod as the fusion process is activated, Bruno Fly is gruesomely fused with chunks of the metal and uh, other components from telepod 2. As the mortally wounded Bruno Fly telepod Fusion. Okay, so now he's now his, his name is Brundlefly Telepod <laughs> because he's got part of the telepod in him. Brundleflypod. Brundleflypod. <laughs> As the mortally wounded Brundlefly Telepod fusion creature crawls like out telepod. of the receiving Flypod. pod, it silently begs Veronica to end his suffering with Boren's shotgun. A devastated Veronica hesitates for a moment and then pulls the trigger, ending the life of her hideously transformed lover before falling to her knees in anguish. Ang anguish. Anguish. <laughs> anguish. <laughs> anguish. Oh, that's the fly, and it just cuts the credits right there. Um, I like that it doesn't give you anything 
about what happens afterwards, whether she has the abortion. Because they definitely leave it open for the second movie, which obviously they go into the second movie about their kid. I think um, that it's it's good that they leave it open because no no matter how you end, like if you tried to take it in any direction, if you tried to say like she had the baby, then there's no satisfactory way to do that. If you say she had the abortion, there's no satisfactory way to do that. If you say her and Stathis ended up together, there's no satisfactory right. way to do that. But, you know, because like it's almost like a slap to her and Seth to say that they ended up together. But it's almost a slap to say that they didn't end up together because of what he did for her. Right. It's, so, I mean, it's it's all, there's no satisfactory way right. to go in any direction. So in black. the second movie... Because we're not going to, obviously, we're not doing the second movie. We're, it's not in there, is it? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, do they ever explain where she went or what happened to her? She had him. She had the baby. That's that's Martin. That's the, the kid. Yeah, I know that. But I mean, like, what happened to her? Oh, no. She Well, she died in childbirth. I remember that. That's dumb. Yeah. I hate it when Well, I'm it's like, because Gina Davis wouldn't come back. I, I get that. But, like, maybe she just, maybe she didn't die. Or maybe, you know. Well, there was the... She wouldn't come back because they didn't do the original idea that they had for a sequel. She was on board for that. I think I have it in trivia, but I don't remember what it is. So I guess we'll have to wait for trivia for that. But she was on board for one of the ideas for a sequel. But they didn't go with it. So she didn't come back for the one that they did make. It's not like a Ripley thing where she had to have sex with the fly itself, right? No, I don't think so. Uh, No, no, no. It was nothing. Sex with an alien? Yeah, no, it was nothing like that. It was... Something, that whatever it was, whatever that, it was, one I of remember. Sigourney Weaver's, uh, yeah, that was one of her, is that she had yeah. to have sex with a, yeah, she got, xenomorph. yeah, yeah, she got all of her wishes. No, but, um, no, I remember thinking like that was a really good one, the one that they had, but I don't remember what it is. It's a trivia, I know it, hmm. I know, I'll put it in trivia, but uh, yeah, they, she was on board for one of them and not, not that. So this movie is, uh, it's it's amazing because nobody actually dies in this movie, except Brundle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, he doesn't actually kill anyone. He doesn't kill anybody in this whole movie. Mm-hmm. Not a single person. He comes close to killing uh, what's his face? Stathis. Stathis. Yeah. J- Jason Stathis. <laughs> he tries to kill Veronica. He was probably gonna really hurt that prostitute, prostitute chick. Yeah. Um, well, she wanted he wanted to teleport her. Yeah, yeah but I mean, who knows what would have happened to her, you know? They don't even really talk about her. Like, they didn't talk about her in the thing, but, like, she was kind of a big part of the movie there for a minute. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, like, if you saw some dude go into a bar and break some dude's arm, are you going to leave with him? No, I'm good. Fuck no. Especially for a guy who breaks his arm and then just gets up and, like, all right, let's go. Like, hold on a minute. You're not even going to see if he's okay. You just broke his fucking arm in half. I'm not leaving with you. Yeah, which was a great effect, by yeah. the way. It was, but uh, well, that you know, that's scream. actually one of the last effects that they did. They put it off until the very end, and they were, like, on the um, cusp of being done. Like, being, like, on wrapping. the very, like, wrapping. Like, they were, they had almost no time left to do it. But the reason that they left it until the very end was because they knew it was going to be easy to do. I love how, like, at the beginning of this movie, like, uh, Jeff Goldblum's hair looks as dorky as can be. By the end of it, he's like, he comes out, like, he comes out of that telepod the first time, like, he's like this kind of god. <laughs> like, this god's gift to, like, women. He's, like, standing there with, like, chiseled abs and this, like, beautiful, long, luscious hair. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? A goddamn, like, romance novel fucking commercial? <laughs> like, what is going on here? <laughs> well, I mean, he. I think the first time you see him, they make him look a certain way, but the hair was always there. It was just, he wore it or he combed it a certain way, you know, and then they have him in this like, you know, uh, suit most of the time. But, you know, the first time you see him like with like a, a shirt that's not covering him completely, you can tell that he's like ripped, you know, it's just, they cover it up until that moment. I just I, like in certain scenes, I'm like, okay, he's not a bad looking dude. Then there's other scenes like, God damn, you're one ugly motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you are ugly, dude. I don't think he's uh, attractive in looks. 
I think he's supposed to be more attractive and like, like you're an the interesting way, person. Yeah, the way he carries himself, who, yeah, yeah, who he is as a person is what makes him attractive, not necessarily how he looks. That's like Gina Davis. I've always thought she was like moderately attractive, but she's always been pretty to me in like the who, way that, who she is puts her over yeah, the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that I've always found that to be those like lips. her attractive quality. Yeah. That too. Mm-hmm. But like, like even in like Beetlejuice, she was not attractive in Beetlejuice in any way. I think it's her hair in Beetlejuice that Probably, perm, yeah, definitely. that they yeah. that nineties mom perm. Yeah, she has that a lot in a lot of movies. She even kind of has it in the, in the Fly. But like, but then you get her in like, uh, like Earth Girls Are Easy, and she's pretty smoking in that movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or like, you get her in like uh, Long Kiss Goodnight, and she's attractive. Like she gets that blonde hair, yeah, that cut, and yeah, that cut and everything, and. But I like that movie. That movie's awesome. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I got to hand it hands down. The fucking effects in this movie are amazing. Mm-hmm. I lo- but I love practical monster effects yeah. and shit, dude. Yeah. But I love a good monster movie and, yeah. alone. So you guys have a lot of notes or do you want to? I you know, have one more that I want to say. I am 300% sure that when he opened up that medicine cabinet after his Transformation transformation was almost complete. His dick was in there. His dick was in there. I thought the it same was. thing. Was it? Yeah, it was. I was just. I thought it was. I was like that had because like, it was just a quick. Yeah, just real quick. Thing. But I'm three hundred percent. I was sure like that had there. to have been his penis there. Yep. Yeah, just it sitting was. there. So like when that falls off, it, it's real, right? I mean, like, are you just done at that point? Like you're just gonna go with it at that point, right? Because like there's no turning back. I put a gun in my mouth. Man, I'm pretty sure done. that when your your nails come off, that's probably a turning point. You should probably do something because other things are going to start falling off. I think. Yeah, and that span between her leaving after the whole prostitute girl, which she says she wasn't a prostitute, that part and her coming back, that was four weeks. They said it was yeah. four weeks. So you're telling me for four weeks you did nothing about yeah, you're, you're, you let yourself you just, deteriorate. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to understand that either. So but. after I would have seen my face turning that way, that's when I'd be like, okay, okay, there's a problem here. We got to fix this. I don't care if I could be a national fucking, like a, a gold medal Olympist. Like I want to, I want to, you know what I mean? Bring I other scientists in here and see what I can do about getting some human DNA people in here in so the, I can get a. Yeah. I'd be hmm. pulling every crack. Head I mean, if you, if you got this like amazing strength, like. Go bust into a prison and like grab some murderers. You know what I mean? Like do something else. I don't understand. Like grab your girlfriend. You know. I don't understand what I don't know. That'd be weird. I'd love to see him fuse with other people to see how that worked. Man, that'd be. Yeah. Would you grow in size? Would you get bigger? Would you be taking characteristics from that other person? Would you yeah, be taking how would that work? In the second one, it just turned his son back into. I get that. But yeah, that's, but I'm so, saying. It, that, I, mean, we're I, I think that about, one, the storyline and plot in that movie is far yeah, less but superior. I'm not, I'm not saying one. going one with the other. This, I though. only remember because I I have gripes about the second one, like about that whole transformation and shit at the end. I'm like, hold on a fucking minute. Here. I only remember like plot. When you're Mostly, mixing, I don't remember a lot because, and the only reason I remember a plot is because I feel like it was a good plot that they had. They could have done so much more with That's it. That's how I thought about it too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, when you're mixing DNA like that, you're going to be getting like his hair is going to be red. So now you're going to have yeah. some red hair in your your yeah, stuff. You're going to have those doing that. Like he's like old. Like, are you just going to not look old, or are you going to? Plus, you're also well, like the in the movie. Probably, he's actually only probably five years. Won't. Well, he was yeah, only he, supposed to be five only, years old. Yeah, and age probably old. won't do Which is also factor. another thing I thought was kind of weird because that girl was like into him. I'm like, yeah. you realize he's only like mentally five years old. But he was like a genius. So he was like mentally also aged. But I mean, uh, right. you could make arguments, I suppose, but mm, still weird. But still weird. Still weird. Yeah. I mean, you may look like a full grown man, but that doesn't mean because some 16 year old, 15 year old looks like a full grown man. It's okay to go bang him. But see, that's another thing too. <laughs> if, if he would go and take some murderers or rapists or whatever, don't you think something in their their mentality? Was yeah, that's the whole nature versus nurture argument, right? Like, what makes them that way? I don't know. I I don't know. I I can't. You know, what I mean, yeah. Like what? Yeah, you could you could raise a whole bunch of possibilities. You know, like the and even even without the tragedy of this story, you know, there's the whole possibilities of like all of the different things you could use this this for you know cancer treatment 
You know, the whole thing with cancer, the whole reason that we can't come up with a, a solution for it or a cure for it is because cancer is literally cells. Yeah, and we was. all have different cells. So we have treatments that work, but we can't come up with a cure because all of us have different cells and they all mutate in different ways. So we're never going to have a cure for cancer because there is no such thing as a, you know, cure for cure something all. that, yeah, there's no cure all because we don't all have the same kind of cells. Yeah. It's a, it happens at a cellular level. But if you had something like this, that literally changed your molecular structure. There's your cure, if yeah. you could work with it in a certain way. Yeah, if you if you could uh, if you could master program it, it and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just opens up a whole realm of possibilities if it would work in the correct ways. It's just I I don't I don't see, and and I have a very limited understanding. I'll be honest, but you know i i don't understand or i don't i don't i can't wrap my my mind around it in a way where you could master it i don't see how you, you know even like you brought up you know some kind of sterilization that's fantastic it's a perfect scenario except you still have bacteria inside your body that's living true how do you separate that bacteria yeah like what about the bur what about the burger he just ate like he yeah. eats a burger he goes in there it's his body going to fuse with the DNA of that bird or the cow. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what it, I mean? that there's, there, how, do, how does, how does the computer know that the bacteria inside your body doesn't belong in your skin or like, you know, how does it, how does it separate it that like, living especially bacteria? Especially because like human, the human body is one of the most complex. Actually, any, any anatomy is, is complex mm -hmm. as fuck. Like you can't just take it apart, put it back together. That's yeah. not how that works. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not trying to tear apart the, the science of the movie the because movie, it, yeah. who cares? It's, it's, it's a movie. You know, it's a movie, but just saying that um, in a realistic matter, I, I don't see how teleportation could work with living creatures. Inanimate objects, perhaps, but would never with a living creature. Even even inanimate objects. like That she, would still be very It'd still be very complicated, especially for a computer to decipher put it, and to put it back together. Because, like, if you think about it, like a stocking, how do you know that a stocking, like the stocking you used, put it in there? And maybe it came out the other side and it wasn't threaded together properly, or yeah. it was just a bunch of little pieces fibers. of string and fibers laying there. You know what I mean? Like, yep. how does it know to put it back together the way that it was made? Correct. You know, things like that. That's just, yeah. but like you said, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. Movie anyway, magic. Yeah, movie logic. Yeah. Um, is that all you guys got? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all I had. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, create this motherfucker, I guess. Let's rock out this bitch. You ready for it? You look ready. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we, uh, we need a timestamp. <clears throat> I thought you said you were good at this, Jeremiah. I am good. Man. <laughs> Start docking your pay. <laughs> Wait, he's getting paid? <laughs> Shh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <stop. What the laughs> no, I said I'm going to start docking it. That doesn't mean you get any. What the fuck do we get ice cream? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck do we get ice cream? <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and review it, and uh, we're going to start with Jeremiah. What do you give the fly, man? What do you think? And remind me, we got to get Addison off this one too. We didn't get her last week. Mm -hmm. so. I would probably give it. I'd probably say a seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. Um, the body horror. Mm -hmm. Cronenberg does a great job. Um, Goldblum, Gina Davis, excellent. Even the staff, this guy, were excellent. You know, I like how most of it was confined. Yeah, you know they did that, but yeah, overall, yeah, I don't really have much, much to really bitch about, you know, aside from the whole genetic, yeah, thing, genetic thing we don't yeah. fully understand. <laughs> but again, science fiction. I mean, they can do literally Where anything they that they want. So yeah, I would. Okay, I think for me, uh, the movie's great. 
it is one of the best. It's one of the greatest horror movies, in my opinion, or it used to be, I should say. I think watching it this time, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, watching it this time, I'm not as impressed with it. I still love it, but it's not on like the level of the thing. I still love the thing. It'll never get old. Um, but like the body horror, um, the effects, uh, all that stuff, man, the vomiting that he does. And Jeff Goldblum, dude. Oh, my God, dude. He had to have been miserable in all them prosthetics and shit. He said the worst part was what they used on his eyes, around his eyes, because it was so heavy. It made him sleepy. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that it was like, it was grueling for him, for uh, especially. Um, but somebody as smart and as, I believe, mentally tough as him could handle something like that. Um, yeah. But aside from that, like, the story itself is great. I, I think it's got a great, a great fucking story. I think that the plot... And the and the overall like uh, idea of this movie is is genius. It's genius. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of holes in their science in the movie, but it's a fucking movie. So I mean, what else do you want out of it? If you you wanted them to explain everything, that they'd have to actually bring in genetic scientists, and oh, yeah. you know what I mean. Like it would be almost impossible to explain away. Oh, they would debunk everything. He's well, they would have to because it's not the possible. movie wouldn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we're not here for the science. Exactly. It's science fiction. But for what they have here, it's fucking clever. You know what I mean? And um, I think that Gina Davis and Good Jeff idea. Goldblum are amazing in this movie. They're fucking awesome. Um, and I, I agree with Jeremiah. I think that the, the it, most of it taking place in his apartment mm -hmm. is so good, man. It's just It shows what you can do with a great story and a great plot. With and very little, you know what I mean? Like setting. three main actors, two mostly, actually, I should say. Like the other guy was only in, in it for probably a total of, what, 10 minutes? You know what I mean? He didn't have a lot of screen time. And uh, like, but the two of those two just off going off of each other and Jeff Goldblum explaining away all the science and everything and then her listening and, and, and her love for him, blah, blah, blah. All these things, they mesh so well in this movie. And but I will also say that it doesn't hold up for me as it did, you know, 15, 20 years ago, the first time I watched it. Um, so but for, even still, though, it's still a scary ass movie. And uh, I love monster movies and I love practical effects. So for that, I'm going to give it an eight because I think it's a great movie. Uh, a lot of what you guys said, um, the practical effects on a nerd for that too uh this tragic love story between the two of them i think is pretty amazing um still a better love story than twilight <laughs> <laughs> i mean like i think the the one scene that i was kind of this was sort of the point for me it's kind of like my demon lover <laughs> hey shut your whore mouth <laughs> This, uh, the two scenes that killed me with her was, um, I mean, there was a lot of them, but this one struck me in particular was the scene where his ear falls off and she kind of gasps and then yeah. immediately just hugs him. I, I don't know if I got that in me. Yeah, because you know his flesh has to and you know he, be rotting he has away. to yeah. be stinky. And like, how do you know, like, what he's got all over him isn't. Like contagious or acidic or, I mean, or anything. It's, yeah, and she spit. doesn't even she doesn't even give it a second thought. She, she just, just yeah. immediately grabs him and hugs him. Like it's it's. I mean, she doesn't even care that it could be contagious. That's how much she loves him. And exactly. Great. I mean that that is that is just wow. Um, I'm usually not a fan of body horror, but I, to be fair, I think that a lot of times body horror is almost comedic in the way it's done. And I agree. I'm one, not a big fan of body I, horror. I'm, I'm usually not. This one is 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 almost magical in the way it does it. It's it's very perfect in the way that it is implemented and uh, used when it's used. In. I do love whenever she comes in and like he's just like, "Hey, watch me! I can crawl on the walls mm -hmm. and ceilings now. Like it, it's fucking normal." Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you I know feel what I mean? great. Yeah, yeah, I feel great. Look at this. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't look shit. like it. <laughs> yeah, their last interaction was so horrifying. And then she comes in and he's like, yeah, everything's fine now. You know? So it's not just 
the way that they're talking to each other, you're also seeing his transformation happening and they're using that body horror to also show what is being conveyed through their, their actions and their words. So it's not, you know, the body horror is, is used as part of the plot as well. Also, you know, it's, it's just, it's done very well in this movie. And I think that's why I like it. Um, the acting, as you guys said, is amazing. The plot, it all lends together. Um, the soundtrack, I think also lends because there's a lot of like swelling music happening when uh, certain scenes are happening and it really lends to what's happening on screen. Um, and finally, one of the things I found very uh, awesome, very, it kind of struck me too, was uh, Stathis' transformation as through the movie, you know, what from being this tool bag. Yeah. To, where yeah. he really came through for her. And, you know, you, like you see him in the, in the apartment, like when she finds out she's pregnant and, you know, like at first you're just kind of like, oh, he's just, you know, he's just going to be your friend or whatever. But like you see him watching this thing, you know, and you're like, oh, he's going to be a dick and he's going to talk to her about like, oh, that's so gross. And instead his reaction to her saying, you know, she's pregnant is exactly what a good person would be is like, what are you going to do? You know, like instead of just, you Being know, like, what, oh, you need to get rid of it. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, what are you going to do? How, you know, and, and he immediately, or what do you want to do? Yeah. And he immediately, you know, listens to what she has to say. And he's the one that is trying to help her. He's finding doctors. He's, you know, going to do whatever it takes to get her what she needs. Yeah. Um, and that is a good turnaround for him. And that did make me like him by the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I honestly, it's been so it's been so long since I've seen this movie that I actually forgot about that turnaround for his character. Because mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, this fucking guy, he's a fucking dick. And then I remember, but I don't remember that turnaround. See, and I, I made the comment to, to Jeremiah, I said, I, I remember, like, him being an asshole. But I think at the end of the movie, like, he helps her. But I don't remember for sure, like, if he's, like, a good guy or if he just shows up at the end to try to help. I don't remember. Because I do remember him being there at the end. I remembered the end scene with him, like, sitting there. I remembered right. that. But, like, you know, him showing up with that shotgun, not knowing what he's walking into, knowing full well that Seth is a monster at this point. He knows that he's going into a dangerous situation. I mean, that says a lot. He just goes in there with a shotgun, and that's it. You know? But, uh, yeah, so... I think, for me, it's gonna be... An eight and a half. I really like this movie, and I think it is a fantastic movie with a lot of... I think an eight and a half is fair. Good points. What do you think, Eric? So, I mean, it goes a long ways with what you guys said. I mean, all the That's special... That's always how he starts out his well, review. It, it's, it's what it's, you guys said, pretty much. It pretty much is. always cover everything he wants to say. He's <laughs> like, damn it! Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot more to say on this. I mean, the special effects is what really, you know, gives it a high rating or higher rating for me. Um, the plot of the movie, it's it's there. It's it's good. Um, I it's don't no know. Transformers two though, right? No. <laughs> it's funny. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really, for me, it's the special effects. It's what really gives this movie flair for me. Um, right. I can't really say special, but, you know, I mean, the, the, the practical effects. effects. Yeah, practical yeah. effects. Yeah, the practical effects are what always kills it for me, man. I love that. I'm effects. a sucker for it. Yeah. Um, the way that they all, at, all the actors interacted with each other was pretty good. So I'm just going to go in with a seven because it's just not something I could sit here and watch over and over. So I'm going to say a seven. Okay. Don't forget Madison. Madison, thank you, because I, I almost did. <laughs> We're going to call Madison, and hopefully she answers. And uh, get her review here. Where is it? Oh, yeah, punk-ass Madison. Punk-ass Madison. That's what I got her my phone as. I figured. Punk-ass. Punk-ass. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hi. Um, Hi. The podcast. Hi. Well, duh. No, actually, <laughs> then why the fuck did you that. ask? It was a rhetorical question. What a rhetorical your ass. 
not from over there you ain't. Right, not on the oh. podcast. We don't need to beat no people knowing <laughs> how I beat you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. How's so everybody doing? Pretty good. A lot better Karen, than you're going to be when you get home. Love you. Love you. Oh. <laughs> Karen, save me. Well, let me know when you'll be here. <laughs> Two weeks. Well, a week and a half. Uh, yeah. you got you got your review for the fly. Yeah, I got my review for the fly. I love that she doesn't hear our reviews before we call her. <laughs> she's going in blind. She's coming in blind. Well, she, 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 usually she'd she be the first one we she ask. Can't anyway. answer like oh, I do. Yeah. Normally, I go but she's been here for the whole podcast, so she yeah. kind of has a idea of how That's we true, felt. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think about um, the fly? Honestly, I was not expecting that chimpanzee to be like inside out like that. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little. Were you hungry? It, Did it make you hungry? Just, I ate lasagna while I watched this movie. Yum. Do it. He said he ate lasagna while he watched this movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. How'd that food settle? Just fine. Just fine. Because we can depict the difference between real and not real. It was nice and squishy. Oh, yeah. And I, didn't saucy. Eat, I didn't eat before I watched it, so it's probably a good thing. I just got done eating peach rolls and corn dogs. <laughs> well, that's healthy <laughs> those two things don't go together yeah, but there was ketchup too and ketchup's got tomatoes and tomatoes are healthy so tomatoes whatever your logic yeah. tells you uh um, anyway yeah. about the movie <laughs> right, right 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 i am gonna go ahead and give it a seven and a half it was pretty good actually i kind of like really liked it and i can't isn't that one chick from like ghostbusters or something where is she from <sighs> From Beetlejuice, it's Gina Davis. Beetlejuice, yeah. Gina Sorry, Davis. Like she was just in uh, the other movie, Earth Girls Are Easy. Remember we reviewed that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her and him both were in Earth Girls Are Easy. Yeah, well, my brain wasn't working. Okay, it's running a little slow today. Makes sense. Um, shut up. That's not funny. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. It was really good. Um, we all gave it nine. Oh, my bad. I'm just kidding. We didn't give it nines. I was going to say that doesn't make a lot of sense. What would Karen give it? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Jeremiah gave it a seven and a half. Eric gave seven it a... Seven. A seven. And I gave it an eight. Seven and eight. Well, I was in there. Yeah, you're like right in the middle. You're on there. Was, you're on par with yeah. Jeremiah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. And then... He looked really, really freaky, though. Mm-hmm. Like, he just looked like a messed up mess. Yeah, that's a Cronenberg movie for you. Yeah. But he looked cool. You know, Ada told me earlier, she goes, <laughs> she goes, I am a horror fanatic, horror fan fanatic or whatever. And then uh, she asked me what I was watching after that. <laughs> I said the fly. She was like, oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's the fly. <laughs> it's the fly. You, I was like, what did you just what did I just say? Or what did you just tell me the uh, like ten minutes ago? I'm a horror fanatic. Ew, what's that? <laughs> yeah, things that fly around. And she was like, I've never heard of that one. Then why have I never heard of it? I was like, it's a classic. You should she probably watch it. She should it. probably watch it. Probably, Ada. Yeah. Yeah, it's Aiden, literally one it. of the best ones. It's like on all the lists and stuff that say you have to watch it. It really is. It's like, it really is. Thousand one movies you need to watch before you die. And so and I probably like on top on the top one hundred horror movies of all time. Yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know where it would sit. I'm sure. Actually, I bet it's in the top fifty. Oh, probably. Oh, so. oh, yeah. But all right, top we're gonna get back maybe. to it. Um, I will. I'll let you know what we're gonna do next week. All right. Sounds good. All right. Love you. Bye, love you guys. Love you. I just hung up on her. <laughs> She's like, okay. So we're at a 7.6 then for aggregate. 7.6, that's not too bad. Uh, you did the Rotten Tomatoes this week? Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, what do you think? For the critics. 76. 76. That's actually a pretty good number. For critics, I'm going to go I'm going to go 80. It's Cronenberg. So could go either way. Yeah. 
I'll go 70. Joseph will take it. It's a 93%. Oh, damn. I thought about going up to 85, but... I, know, I thought about it, too. Yeah. I'm like, it could go either way. When scientist Seth Brundle, Jeff Goldblum, completes his teleportation device, he decides to test its abilities on himself, unbeknownst to him. A housefly slips in during the process, leading to a merger of a man and insect. Initially, Bundle appears to have undergone a success, successful teleportation. But the fly cells begin to take over his Dude, body. you're reading the plot again. Well, this is what... That's the plot. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I'm just... I thought that's what... You, you thought it was crazy consensus? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I shove it up there and you're like, oh, that's That's not what it. I thought. That's well, anyways, I don't have the critics' consensus then. Don't worry about it. Okay, audience. Mm. 92. 92. I think the audience is going to be high, too. I agree. 89. 89, you fuckers. Uh, damn. You said 92? I'm $1 and you're asking going 93. You would. Jeremiah's going to take damn. it. Damn. It's 83%. Really? Fuck them. Oh, dude, what the fuck? Wow. Well... It's body it's, horror. Yeah. Most people don't have the stomach for it. I thought it'd be higher, though, man. I thought that, like, for sure, like, well, I guess whenever you get a bunch of random fucking You'd think that people. tragic love story would speak to people. Yeah, but let's face it. You get a lot of random ass fucking people on Rotten Tomatoes. Who, oh, this movie was weird. It's not, so, it's not Twilight, man. Buckle sure. in, because I got some really long ones. Oh, really? Mm. All right, so the first one. The original movie, The Fly, was a lovely little horror film. Was it great? No, but it was effective and fun to watch. Did it need to be remade? Possibly, but only with the, if the integrity of the original story re remained and it was given better special effects, but not like this. Gone, is, gone is the silly fun of the original. Question. And it's, it's a horror movie, right? It is a horror movie to begin with. There was no silly fun about it. Why like the we original was well, the original was more of like the fifties. I get that kind of campy theater, yeah. campy movie. I get that. It had Vincent Price in it, didn't it? Yeah, uh, I think. The yeah, it did. First yeah, it did. The second one, the first and second, not the third. Yeah, the third one had a different guy. Okay, so um, yeah, in its place is a vis visceral. Uh, Visceral. yeah, viscerally disturbing, nauseating, actually mess with a rather mean spirit. It's simply unfun and un unappealing. Well, if you want fun, watch a Disney movie. This is a horror movie. It literally says it in the genre. Yeah. So here's another one. Another sad remake of a good movie. It pales in the shadow of Vincent Price's version. Oh my God. It does give a few changes for changes from the original better movie but the they are just tweaks to give a different tangent made uh possible with real real oh, fuck i can't forget relatively yeah more modern special effects somewhat or yeah the accident that causes the transfer transformation is somewhat different, but ultimately the same results. Goldblum was poor, a poor choice as the main actor. I fucking disagree. I wholeheartedly yeah. disagree. He was easily the best part of this fucking movie. He sounds perfect. The same. That, well, him and Gina Davis were perfect. The way yeah. he acted like the fly and he, like he those little like ticks that he would the do. Yeah. Those were fucking great, man. He sounds the same in every movie that he is in. He throws around a tirade of sophisticated slash science words to make the pseudo intellectuals think that. When he... are you reviewing this exactly? Because back when this movie came out, how many movies did he have under his belt? I don't know. You not, know what I mean? Like not, not very many. They, not many. This review was in 2022. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Shut the fuck up, dude. And all right, words to make pseudo da, 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 smart is smart, and a movie is cutting edge. Goldblum is just mechanical. He does not act well. Uh, this movie throws in the blood and gore Hollywood is using for entertainment. What blood and gore? There was no blood in this fucking movie. I yeah. like how he says Very mechanical. Little, anyway. yeah. Oh, when the baboon got turned inside out. I yeah. mean, yeah, okay. Thing, I like how he that. said mechanical. That was literally part of his character to yeah. be mechanical and kind of cold especially at the beginning especially as a, yeah because he was a fucking scientist yeah like when she says you know do you ever change your clothes and he said yeah these are clean and she looks and he has like the same pair of clothes like five pairs of the same yeah. thing yeah. like he is mechanical 
That's literally his character. Hold on, I'm, I've got. Like I said, I've got quite a few. <sighs> so let's get through this. Sorry. Uh, where was I? Um. Cannibal does not act well. The, this movie throws in the blood and gore Hollywood is using for entertainment for the visceral crowd that aspires aspires to violent and base behavior. Save yourself 95 minutes of wasted life that you will not get back and pass on this movie. Another long one. Uh, for some Hollywood reason... is using... This is an old movie, a dumb fuck. Yeah, yeah it was back, back in the 80s. This movie's literally 34 years old. Okay, unless that was, unless that was in the '80s review, which I very much doubt, since the internet wasn't really a thing back then. Hollywood is using. You got a time machine. Yeah, uh, take especially nowadays. Take a look at what we're getting. Literally this year, name one fucking movie that is coming out that isn't a sequel, a remake, a reboot, or anything of the sort. See. Or an exorcism movie. Or an exorcism movie. Like, right. give, me, give me an original fucking uh-huh. movie that's coming out this year. Name one. That looks like the worst one. It's the worst one. That's the longest. Prequels, Prequels exactly. Uh, that's what I mean, yeah. It's about, like, four paragraphs. Something ori- new and original that isn't been done, remade, sequeled, prequeled. <laughs> reimagined. Made, reimagined. Made from something else, was a TV series, now making it a movie. Name one. Like, even that movie that I posted earlier with The Rock in it about another fucking Christmas movie. It's just another Santa Claus movie, and The Rock is playing the same fucking character that he plays in everything. this ain't your normal Santa. Yeah, so, name one fucking movie. Like, there's a, like, okay, like, there's a couple of movies maybe in that mix, but I guarantee you they're fucking horror movies. They're probably horror movies. Okay. So, because that's the only originality we have left anymore. I never understood why anyone thought this was a good movie. It's a silly re- remake of a fifties classic with Vincent Price. I no, highly recommend. Silly. I highly recommend watching the original. The remake has bad acting, a weak script, and is totally predictable. It relies on some gross-out scenes for content, and that is supposed to be the great cinema. Question mark. Watch the original. Your face is great, son. Another yeah. one. What did I nah, just see? I might break the camera. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't buying a ticket for that. <laughs> what did I just see? This movie is very bad and cringe. This movie almost made me fall asleep. I'll forget it about this movie in T-minus two seconds. But you didn't because you decided to write a review you about it. You say cringe like this movie is bad and cringe. I'm right, y'all. <laughs> yeah, this that movie is... That is something is... Martin Major said. Right, yeah. Repulsion, a David Cronenberg film. One out of ten. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> it's supposed to be repulsive. That's what makes it so great. I know, but that's yeah. funny. That's what makes it great. <laughs> it was like, Repulsion, a da- David Cronenberg scent. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. David Cronenberg film, one out of ten. Uh, I had expectations. You <laughs> toilet. <laughs> I had expectations for this movie, seeing it had very positive reviews, and because I loved actors, Davis and Goldblum, and other films. I thought the story was thin, the love story without credibility, uh, special effects were disgusting. Or say this story effects. was not thin at all. Yeah. We're disgusting. This but- is thick like fucking Ron Jeremy's cock, dude. This <laughs> shit was thick as fuck. But looking more like leprosy than a tr- light transformation to a fly. Well, tell me what a transformation into a fly looks like, because I've yeah. never seen right. it. I'm sorry. Do you have experience with this? Yeah, this one kind of throws of me off, because you know? this person uses fucking It's emojis. my friend from Canada. You wouldn't know him. Yeah. All right, they do I'm, things different up there. I'm going to like say the emojis as they're in the sentence, okay? All right. The Fly is a 1986 American science fiction horror film directed by and co-written by David Cronenberg. Ladybug, oof. Wait, written and co-written? That's what I said. Co- a so lady- directed how do you write- and co- No, directed Hold and on. co-written. Oh, dire- oh, sorry. Directed oh. and co-written. Okay. So by David Cronenberg, Ladybug, oof. What? What? Ladybug. Why the ladybug? I don't know. This is, there's oh. Ladybug, oof. It might have just said fly. Tr- couldn't find a fly emoji, so you used Ladybug. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, that's still yeah. dumb. This isn't good. Reaching. Yeah. If you couldn't find Unathe- a fly, then Unath- just don't put Unathe- it in there. Unathe- <laughs> face. 
A what is it? An unenthused. 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 It's kind okay. Of like, okay. Okay. You're meh. Probably give it a miss. Thumbs down. This movie is so bad. It's a laughable. Be afraid. Be very afraid. With when Seth Brundle makes a huge scientific and technological breakthrough breakthrough in teleportation. He decides to test it on himself, unbeknownst to him. Da, 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 da. So now you're just going off by the plot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're literally writing the synopsis. Yeah, and that's basically what he, he starts naming off the plot end of that paragraph. Yeah. Threw me for a loop. Okay, if you can't talk in more than emojis and then summarize the plot, I'm... Yeah. Shut up. Now here's the long one. It's like fucking four paragraphs to be sit, sit in here, fellas. For some reason, ob- obsessive filmmakers make horrible movies that end up taking as works of genius by many. This is one case. This movie is disturbing like no, like none I have ever I've seen to date. December 9th, of twenty twenty-two. Uh, Need to get out more. It is not rated on the this website, but it is obviously R for nudity, violence, and gore. The genre is called no nudity. You There's saw, very the, the, you it, see the covers. It, yeah, no, no, no. You nudity. saw his butt. Yeah. yeah, and you saw like a like a, a the side. Well, it was like, like Terminator esque when he opened yeah. up the fucking the pod door and he's like laying there or whatever. No, they saw his butt whenever she's he's laying on top of that prostitute. Yeah, so, but also, I mean, maybe the side boob. Of yeah, there's Gina just Davis. but barely side boob, like yeah. barely. The dick in the cabinet. That That's must be the dick in the cabinet. Yep. God damn it! The rotting that dick, dick in, the in the cabinet. The genre is called <laughs> biological horror or body horror. What actually means nothing. So I actually means nothing. So I prefer the it's first really a genre. This kind of movie relies on gruesome effects more than anything else, and the dread of being body horror. The dread <laughs> of being infected and losing your grip on the human body. And this movie sets the standard. Audio. <laughs> Sets the standard. The acting of Goldblum the Fly and Davis the Girlfriend are at the level of a low budget movie. What in Wait, a s- what? You say low budget movie? Yeah. Dude, fucking AAA titles, fucking hundred million dollar titles couldn't do what this movie did. What Create the- a good story, a thick as cock story. With three people with in one three room. With three fucking people in one room. Well, I mean, it's more than one room, but most of it's in this one room yeah. with a solid fucking plot. What, in a sense, this movie is, except it had a big budget for the first time for a movie of this genre, and what's that's what makes it exceptional. Okay. A lot of care was given into the, the FX... And makeup Cronenberg's editing is a as bad as your typical eighties movie. Um, and some big mistakes were made in making the final edit, leaving important and relevant scenes out. Special care was given into making the scenes or making the main character likable. Although the main actor is I'm sorry, man, I gotta interrupt. This just popped in my head. So the part where he's like like th- excreting down on his leg and his arm i just thought hock to just spit on that thing <laughs> that's it just popped in my head i'm thinking mm-hmm. i'm like I, I just envisioned him spitting on his leg and i'm thinking hock to <laughs> special care was given into making the main character like it was funnier in my head they didn't really though although he the was main, just likable although the main didn't. actor is anything else but likable for Cronenberg, it is a tragic love story, but in my opinion, it's hard to tell a love story when you put so much weight on gruesome close-ups. The movie makes no effort in hiding the hideous... Gina Davis sells the hideousness. love story. She sells the love story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The movie makes no effort in hiding the Her, hideousness. She breaks your heart. Hold, yeah. hold on, I'm like, like, right there. The movie makes no effort in hiding the hideousness of the fly character. In fact, it puts... in. Inputs it right in your face. Well, yeah, it's part of the fucking movie. It's called, it's called the, the fly. fly. It's called the fly, and it's a Cronenberg movie. Yeah, so I'm done. That's it. So you're gonna see a giant, disgusting fly and a rotting dick. <laughs> and a rotting dick. Do, do hawk, do hawk to, <laughs> hawk to. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> that had me dying. <laughs> that fucking that, that's a good meme though. Hawk Tua, spit on that thing. That's what he did to that donut. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's trying uh, to do the the kids thing too. Like he's like, "Oh, watch this, kids!" Like, ain't oh, nobody showing their great. kids. I'm gonna show like, you how to <laughs> watch Bruno fly. <laughs> like nobody's gonna watch that. Like nobody's that gonna show that to their kids. Though. Like, dude, <laughs> like, what do you think? Are you start a kids television show? I could be like, <laughs> like no, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think anybody, they we're not putting that on PBS. <laughs> That's the funny thing. There's some funny moments in this movie that you're like, huh? Like you didn't catch it years ago watching it because you're like holy shit this is a freaky fucking movie mm-hmm. but as an adult it's less scary so you catch those funnier moments <laughs> a little easier i live with my mom too <laughs> yeah i live with my mom too excellent yeah. those two <laughs> things just those two moments yeah jeff just... goldblum kills it in this movie uh-huh. i don't care what anybody says this uh-huh. i remember what i said my favorite movie of his was whenever we did his creator profile if, if we were even doing that then i don't know i think we I were but we i don't remember not. but like this is i think i said mine there. was Je- jurassic park if I'm not mistaken. I think you did. I think you said Jurassic Park. I, think, I don't remember yeah. what I said mine Dr. was. Dr. Malcolm. Is that his character? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Sexy <laughs> Yeah. I think I... I don't remember what I said. Maybe I did say The Fly, but I don't remember. I don't remember either. Mine might have been The Fly. I don't know. I don't I, I, I really... If would, we even did one. I told him I was going to say Beetlejuice for Gina Davis, and then we got done watching this, and I was like, nope, it's this. Like, her heartbreak... She's okay in Beetlejuice, but she's just kind of like... No, it's more just Beetlejuice She's not selling the emotion or anything about Beetlejuice. No, it's, it's you know more I mean? just Beetlejuice the movie. Right. I, I really like Beetlejuice. Right. You know, it's not... It's not... It's, not it's hard to... Do, it's, it's, it's sometimes... Sometimes you want to pick movies with... With actors in it that because you love the movie. But then mm-hmm. there's other times like, but then again, I really love them themselves, their character a lot more in this movie. Well, see, and I that's the thing. For the movie I couldn't much. think of a movie with Gina Davis in it that I thought she stood out a whole lot i mean there's a long kiss good night but you know i liked a lot of the actors in that movie she didn't stand out to me sam jackson uh, you know yeah she didn't stand out to me any more than he did in that movie so it didn't really there was no movie that i could think of where she stood I disagree. out she definitely stood out way more than he did in that movie yeah i guess like, so it, that is one of those few movies where i'm like that's not a movie where he stood out more than this person. I guess maybe you know I'd, I mean? I'd have to watch it again. I just don't remember. Yeah, she definitely stood out more in that movie than he did because just her transformation between these two separate sort uh, of yeah, these two characters characters was great, and yeah. seeing her as this fucking badass was awesome. Yeah, that, that movie will forever be just my favorite. I love that movie of hers. So. I don't know. After watching this one, though, I was like, okay, no. Yeah, no, this. no, she sells it great in this movie. She's awesome in this movie. Her yeah, emotional, great. I mean, yeah, holy shit. Her range in it a little bit. Oh and, my gosh. And then like, and then, but then again, dude, like Jeff Goldblum, like, I don't know who, like Jeff Goldblum definitely sells this movie because him as the fly and his movements and the way he acts and his like being a the first uh the first bug politician and shit like that you know what i mean like like who thinks of this shit you know that it's had actually, to come uh, from him you know what i mean like no it's actually a uh, um there's a poem the the bug politician thing i think came from uh cronenberg but when he said that i was a an insect that dreamt i was a man that's from a poem not the insect part but i think it might it might be insect, but I don't remember. That's I just think that it's. Poem. I think it's. I think he sells it really fucking well, mm-hmm. and he had to go through some shit to put on all that shit. All that. I think it's like the most the of that's probably that... a bodysuit, mm-hmm. but like oh, all yeah. the facial stuff that had to be put on. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Oh like, yeah. You know, yeah. he's probably spent hours so in the chair. It's the tragedy of it that is. It's so beautiful in its own way, and her reaction to all of it just. I was like, "Yep, it's it's this movie. This is where she shines." Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead if we're done with tri- or with not that. Yeah, with <laughs> that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to trivia. Um, Karen, give us some of that fucking sweet ass trivia. Put that cookie down. <laughs> sweet ass trivia with Karen. In a 1987 interview on Sinister Image, Vincent Price revealed that when this remake was released. 
star Jeff Goldblum wrote him a letter saying, I hope you like it as much as I liked yours. Price was touched by the letter. He composed a reply and went to see the film, which he described as wonderful, right up to a certain point, and then it went a little too far. Yeah. The line, yeah, the line I'm saying, I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it, but now the dream is over and the insect is awake, is a reference to author somebody, uh, very hard to say, Zhu uh, Ngaizi, famous butterfly dream story. It's also a reference to Franz Kafka's Famous short story, The Metamorphosis. After watching some of his early films, uh, director Martin Scorsese asked to meet David Cronenberg. Upon meeting him, Scorsese said he looked like a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. This inspired Cronenberg to give himself the cameo as the doctor. Okay. According to Cronenberg... Wait, he was the, do- he was the doctor. Yeah, he was the guy. Fuck me, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. According to Cronenberg, the line, be afraid, be very afraid, was invented by Mel Brooks while discussing how characters should react to the early stages of Seth Brundle's transformation. Cronenberg was surprised when the film was seen by some critics as a cultural metaphor for AIDS, since he originally intended for the film to be a more general analogy for disease itself, terminal conditions like cancer, and more specifically, the aging process. It took nearly five hours to apply the most extensive makeup stages to Goldblum. Mel Brooks didn't want people to know he was a producer for the films because he thought people wouldn't take it seriously if he knew that he was involved. When people did find out, he decided to make the most of it by handing out dealy boppers at the premiere. Uh, uh, handing out what? Dealy boppers. They're those, um, those like head things that you put on that have like springs and like those little balls on top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I love Mel Brooks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gina Davis wasn't acting. Please don't make Spaceballs too suck. It's going to suck, though. It's going to suck. It's going to suck. Uh, Gina Davis wasn't acting when Jeff Goldblum's you, right You here. know about that, right? No. Spaceballs oh. too. You don't know about it? I thought it, it was a joke. That's yeah, for real. Like, I thought it was, too. It's it's real. They're doing a Spaceballs too, bud. I said they Buckle already, up. I said they already have the right, your childhood. Uh, the right name. It's just the search for more money. Uh, the problem is they're putting Josh Gad in there. The yeah, dude Josh has Gad never done anything in, funny. In to charge me. of it. That dude has never done anything funny. Hmm. I don't know. He was all right in that. What was that? Uh, Who movie? Something about monsters. It was. I think it was a zombie movie. Yeah, but he was in charge of that. No, but he was in it. Yeah, he was in it. But he, anything that he's been in charge of, or like, well, I'm well, talking I've even comedically. I mean, I'm even saying he, like his he, acting. He plays and off of other people, or he's like a character in it or whatever. He does fine. Like he was okay. So the Beauty and the Beast live action. Never seen he it. played uh, Gaston's little Gaston's friend, or friend, whatever, whatever the fuck he is. Um, he was oh, he he did a good job in that, but comedically he wasn't funny. Mm-hmm. He was just supposed to be like that character. Yeah, and he was fine. He did a great job. I'm not saying he's a bad actor or he's, you know, anything like that. I just don't think he's funny. I hope I hope he proves us wrong because it is a beloved thing. Yeah, and you don't you don't fuck, fuck it up, with space balls. Piss off and if it fucking sucks, I will act like it does not exist. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's all I'm saying. I'm mm-hmm. just cuz dude, space balls is near and dear, dude. Like, oh, that it is, is that is that is something close to my heart that you can't fuck with. That's my favorite Mel Brooks hand down. Oh yeah. Hands down. My favorite Mel Brooks. Blazing that, Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles is great, but for me, it I like Blazing compare. Saddles. I love Men in Tights. I love a lot of his shit, but Spaceballs is my number one. I have to yeah. agree. I think it's Space Spaceballs. Spaceballs is too. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly, not even just because of Mel Brooks, but because of like just one John Candy. It's all of it. the little nuance things all that happen. Things, in, everything in, that fucking uh, that uh, Rick Moranis Rick Moranis does. I love gold. the it's knock gold. next time. Knock next. Do you did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. You Good. Did, you <laughs> the itch. You caught their stunt doubles. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Gina Davis wasn't acting when Jeff Goldblum's right ear falls off. Her reaction in the film was genuine, and she was genuinely shocked when it was filmed. Cronenberg kept the take of her reaction in the film. The flies' vomit was made from honey, eggs, and milk. Uh, Cronenberg met with some opposition when he announced that he wanted to cast Jeff Goldblum in the lead role. The executive at Fox, who was supervising the project, felt that Goldblum was not a bankable star, and Chris Wallace felt that his face would be difficult to work with for the makeup effects. He does have a really weird face, though. Uh, Both 
He's, however, he's one of the people that I think grew into their face. <laughs> <laughs> Both, however, deferred to Cronenberg's judgment. Cronenberg himself later had reservations when Goldblum suggested Gina Davis, his girlfriend at the time, for the other lead role, as he did not want to have to work with a real-life couple. Cronenberg was convinced after Davis's first reading that she was right for the role. Stuart Kornfeld suggested that they audition more actresses, saying that it's the script that is brilliant. Kornfeld relented after nobody else even came close. As far as his creative relationship with Cronenberg, Wallace says the director is very fascinating to work with. He's very intelligent, observant, and understanding. He's also challenging and supportive. He's a, he has a very clear idea of what he wants and how he sees things. So the design phase t tends to go quickly. His design directions also tend to be more emotional and psychological than most directors. Most directors will describe what they want physically. They'll say it needs to be bigger, make the eyes red, add more horns. David's descriptions were more like it needs to be in more pain, and I want to see confusion in its eyes. I would say David's style is much fuller and covers a wide des design approach more than most directors. I thought that was kind of neat that he describes what he wants in emotion rather than, you know, it needs. Yeah, but that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that that was really neat, though. I, I thought it was. But neat I think thing. that's a good way to direct somebody. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. listen. It's well, not so much creative. that I wanted to look scary, but I need him to look this way. Well, you have to think like a, an you FX know. person is probably a very creative person. So, like, they would understand that language. They're like, okay. Yeah, I can do yeah, that, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, that would be pretty... That's almost probably surreal for them because they're yeah. like, holy shit, I've never actually had a director... Speak my language, that. yeah. Yeah, ask me that, you know? Uh, Chris Wallace asked Jeff Goldblum to give a physical characteristic to his performance that he could easily transfer over to the end of the Space Bug Puppet. Goldblum thought about it and then added his trademark twitches, which they could then easily add to their puppeteering. Uh, this was originally a project for Tim Burton to direct. Uh, I'm glad he didn't. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm glad Cronenberg did this fucking one. weird. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. he'd have made it some fucking weird ass. I mean, maybe he would have made it his own thing, but it wouldn't be the horror movie we got. It would have been something else Tim Burton did that, <laughs> let's face it, wasn't his again. Yeah. To begin with, <laughs> how many original fucking projects has Tim Burton done? Two. Brundle goes through the stages of grief during his transformation. Denial, he refuses to believe that anything is wrong, believing instead that he has been improved. Anger, he becomes short-tempered. Fear, he is afraid that he sees his body starting to deteriorate. Bargaining, he attempts to arrest the process by fusing, by fusing with another life form. Acceptance, he begs for death. Uh, an early treatment for a sequel written by Tim Lucas involved Veronica dealing with the evils of the Bartok company. Brundle's consciousness had somehow survived within the telepod computer, and the Bartok scientists had enslaved him and were using him to develop the process for cloning purposes. Brundle becomes able to communicate with Veronica through the computer, and he eventually takes control of the Bartok's complex security systems to gruesomely attack the villains. Eventually, Veronica frees Brundle by conspiring with him to reintegrate a non-contaminated version of his original body. Cronenberg endorsed the concept at the Sounds time. Stupid. Sounds like too much. Yeah. Well, there it was more in development as time went on. Uh, I I think it would be cool to see a sequel. Okay, so what you're saying is a sequel would have seen him and Gina Davis back, but like Gina Davis as more of the lead than him, and him being like this. Test sort of well, like he, he well, would have come be back, more of like an he would have come back midway through the movie like she would have freed him from his computer prison and somehow but would there, there would have been a clone body of him or something mm -hmm. i don't know about all that that seems a little yeah. little stretched no more than a five-year-old is that the one science fiction. i mean don't you i don't think that the that the second would be, have been is any better that you know what we got wasn't any better but in this case i don't think that that would have been nearly as well received as the first and i could see why gina davis was like or even yeah Jeff no I, I don't like, think yeah, i would have no. preferred that they didn't do a sequel at all honestly. i agree i um, agree yeah gina davis was open to doing a sequel and only pulled out of the flight too because her character was killed off in the opening scene while goldblum was not although he was okay with a cameo and this treatment and this treatment would reflect that however a later treatment written by jim wee and ken wee was used as the basis for the final script written by Frank Darabont. Mick Garris also wrote a treatment with elements incorporated into the final film that became the final or became the second one, the fly Two. So I think that, uh, if they would have done what they said, Hey, we're like 
Jeff Goldblum had said, well, yeah, I don't mind being killed off in the, in, in the first few scenes of the movie, you know, and then never, you know, and then being done with it. Movies like that never are received well. Because they don't want to see a main protagonist or antagonist get killed off in the first five minutes of a movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? From the previous movie. Well, it's just like Aliens 3. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like that. Like, you don't want to see that. That, like, just kills the whole vibe of the movie yep. for you as soon as you walk into it. Yeah. So I think that uh, seeing him being killed off or seeing Gina Davis being killed off, it just kills it all. I think that if you're going to come back, come back for the movie. Yeah. Or just don't do the movie at all. Yeah. Like, in this case, I think with the second one, I think that for what they got was okay. It's not a terrible movie by any means. Um, the plot it's just mediocre, movie. whereas the mediocre. first one is so yeah. good that it just... I mean, I think that the people involved did fine. Um, but I, And I think the concept behind it was good. I think that it was just poorly executed. Yeah, I agree with that. So mm-hmm. Because like the whole, uh, he's five, uh, because he ages like, a, like an insect would age, um, made sense. Yeah. That was a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end, the ending is what killed the second one for mm-hmm. me. That's what it was like. Like that whole uh, him transporting over with that dude and then being turned back into his just normal self was like, no fucking way. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's going to be some sort of residual effect to that. You know what I mean? He's not just going to transform transport all of his fly DNA over to that guy. There's just no fucking way, you know? I don't know. I guess I'd have to watch it over again. It, I guess there's no more pseudoscience in that than there is in this one. I get that. But, like, like, in this, it's like there are so many more holes than with the first one. I yeah. Guess. No, I, I don't disagree. I think that they could have maybe rounded it out a little better. But um, the insect politics speech was something that David Cronenberg came up with from his days in, as an entomologist. He was fascinated by insect societies, the division of labor, and the caste structure, structure therein. Yet they are very much not human. Uh, According to Cronenberg, the basic premise of the film, two lovers, one of whom contracts the disease and the other who is forced to watch and ultimately helps the sick one commit suicide, would have never been made as a straight drama. However, as a sci-fi genre picture, the more serious dramatic tones and the realism of what the film has to say was guarded. But you have to consider how many people have given themselves their own death sentence in their bathrooms by discovering that thing in the shower, in the bathtub, or in the mirror. And that's where the potency of those scenes come from. The number of actor, a number of actors were approached for the role of Seth, Seth Brundle. Many of them turned the role down as they were afraid of how much prosthetic makeup they would be required to wear later in the film and that their performance would be lost in the makeup and how much it covered. Jeff Goldblum was not afraid at all. He, in fact, welcomed the challenge. The makeup for the last part of the film took over five hours to apply before filming could even begin. Gina Davis would often sing and read to him while he was having his makeup put on. Aww. Cronenberg nice. also notes that Goldblum had to learn how to speak with various kinds of prosthetic teeth in, and the actor had to work with a speech therapist throughout the film. Uh, I love it whenever all of his teeth fall out. He's like, oh, just pure relics, relics. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, Cronenberg notes in the scene where Seth is rambling on and on while continuously pouring sugar in his coffee that even though a lot of dialogue was written, Goldblum added lines. I mean, come on. <laughs> Added lines in order to continue the amping up effect it had on the character. Cronenberg also notes the scene could have a parallel with someone being on cocaine, which was common in the 1980s. Yeah. He also likens the Brundlefly fusion to a disease and the fact that when someone is given a disease, they always try to find the benefits in what is happening to them. There are a few moments where Cronenberg notes a special effect that would have been done using computers had the film been made when technology allowed it. For instance, the scene where Veronica walks in on Seth crawling across the ceiling was done using a huge Ferris wheel and the set being built on that Ferris wheel. I figured. As Seth Goldblum Seth slash Goldblum crawls on the ceiling and down the wall, the set rotated to give the supernatural appearance of someone being able to do such a thing. Sadly enough, I bet that was one of the most expensive things. Oh, I guarantee it. Like, to build like, a whole set on honestly, some kind of wheel. It would be, but honestly, I like it better than them being able to use a computer. Oh, well, of course. I, mean, I agree 100%. Like, I knew what it was. I knew they were using some kind of rotating. Because mm-hmm. you know how they, they have those things where, like, they can literally rotate a whole room. And uh, so they'll build a set inside of essentially this box. Yeah. 
and yeah. and and they have these giant. They rigs. did the same thing for Johnny Depp's scene when he died in Nightmare on Elm Street. That's how they got the blood. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the, yeah, it's because I remember they had a, bit, a lot yeah. of issue. Yeah, yeah, with yeah all the, well, electricity yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, Stathis's melting hand effect was created by sculpting the mutated hand, then building up an intact hand on top of it using gelatin. The gelatin was then melted using stage lights and a hairdryer and filmed at low speed. Chris Wallace essentially recreated the same effect he had used earlier for Tot's melting face in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, two puppeteers, the last two I have. Um, I, I love seeing those scenes where like it's a slow melting. Mm-hmm. Remember in uh, Critters, the first Critters, whenever his face. Oh forms, yeah, and he, yeah. And it's I like remember, wax. Yeah, yeah. You can see the I was wax like, in. I was like, I love those. Those are the cheapest. But and, they're also the most. They're the coolest impressive. fucking effects, and yeah. they're so impressive because it's so simple. Yeah, it's such a simple effect that that does so. Like I know you can tell what it is. You can tell mm-hmm. that it's something they melted or whatever, and they sped sped it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, still, it's so cool. It's it's just an awesome effect that I love from like the eighties and shit. So the last two I have are about the effects team, but they're both um, funny. So. Uh, two puppeteers, one of them were being Chris Wallace, were located underneath the floor animating the inside out baboon while a third pumped blood. All three of them had to wear raincoats because of the large amounts of blood being pumped. Frequently, the rest of the crew would break for lunch and forget about the three of them under the floor. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, that's <laughs> we're like, still that's here. like forgot about down here. Like, uh, we're still down here. <laughs> we're hungry, Makes too. Can, can you bring pa- me a sandwich? All Austin Powers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm badly, so badly burnt. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so badly burnt. <laughs> I remember that shit. Um, while that film- shit. I mean, that, that whole scene. <laughs> yeah. Be fucking dying. While filming the finale, the puppeteers under the floor would get bored. <laughs> And start gluing pictures to John Getz's real foot. Or place it in oatmeal. <laughs> Getz fondly recalls that he should have realized, being unable to move, that he was the perfect target. Can you imagine having to sit there and have a straight face? And, like, know that people are, like, tickling your foot and, like, putting stickers on it, sticking your foot in oatmeal. Like, and having to be, like... Van Damme. Like, looking like you're in pain. Yeah, like, you sons of bitch, knock it off! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Oh, uh, what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? I remember. <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> Let me see Robo-cop. it before you read it. Let me see it before you read it. It's not Robocop. If it's Saw, throw it back in. Don't let her know. It's Robocop. Bullshit. It is Robocop. Was it really? Yeah, it's Robocop. No, it's not. Yeah, it we is. fucking draw it. It's fucking Robocop, No, it's dude. not. Yes, I it was. It was Robocop. Look, well, you threw it back in. Too late. You no. drew it. It's Robocop. Nope. That's what I saw. Redraw it. It's Ro- Mad- Robocop. Put Madison's back next week. It can't no, be Robocop. No, she's not. No, she's not. Oh. No, she's not. It wasn't Robocop. It was Robocop. It wasn't It was Robocop. Robocop. I've been bitching it's Robocop. since the time I've been on here. It's Robocop. Redraw it. <laughs> This is going to be fair and square. All right, fine. There's fine. a lock. It's I was trying lock. to do you a favor, Jeremiah. What was it, actually? Quiet Place. That's a good one, dude. Well, it's too late now. You threw it back I in. threw it back in. It's too late. It's going to be RoboCop now. Son of a it. bitch. It's going to be RoboCop. It's not. <laughs> Saw 3. Eric's going to be pissed at is you. It Texas Chainsaw. God damn it. Welcome back. Number three. <laughs> Fuck you all. Uh, this would I'm be out. the next generation, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah oh, this one's three. fucking terrible. Uh-huh. Fuck that movie. No. The next generation was the fourth one. No. Are you sure? Next generation's three. It's the yeah, third one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the third one. Hold on. So what's the fucking fourth one called? There is no fourth one. The fourth one no, is... The fourth one had Matthew McConaughey and Renee That was, that was mm-hmm. the next generation. That was three. Oh, you guys make my brain hurt. Hold on. I'll look there is up. no fourth one. The fourth one would be the remake. So Texas Chainsaw mm-hmm. Massacre and then Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Oh, no. It is Leatherface, the Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre 3. The Next Generation was the one with Matthew McConaughey. Really? I didn't even one. know. I've yeah, never seen so this So the Next then. Generation yeah. is the fourth one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Third one was... The okay. oh, fuck? I was, I was, I was with Who's you. Seen? I really thought that was the third one. I've seen it. I don't, I don't think there's anybody... I don't think I've ever this. seen this one. I don't think I've ever seen this one, to be honest with you. I don't think well, I have. There you I go. Know. I don't want to. I kind of do. Maybe, you, I maybe you'll like it. I don't want to. 
I can't, I, I missed. Sorry, my, did we already made I, a deal? I missed my one. We already made movie. a deal on the Saw movies. I can't make yeah, a deal did you on watch, the Texas Did you movies. watch uh, the podcast while you were out? No, yeah. he doesn't watch it. He doesn't watch us while he's gone. He well, doesn't think about us. Your buddy over here. We made a deal. It's not streaming anywhere. Go figure. But I think I own it on DVD. On DVD? DVD. Oh, man. Yeah. It's going to be a tough one to find. We made a deal, so we got rid of the second Avatar movie. We're not doing it. Uh-huh. Thank fucking God. And trade for, like, seven Saw movies. So we only have to do one more Saw movie, and that's it. You should have traded... That that would have been worth all the rest of the Texas Chainsaw. No, because the Texas the Chainsaw saw, See, movies. that was why we didn't do it the last time. Because he wanted to throw Texas Chainsaw in, and I wouldn't relent. No, I'm not doing that. Because I think the Texas Chainsaw movies get better as they go. And I think it's worth After it. The remake. I think, yeah. The, well, even well, the remake was wasn't bad. the start bad. of the remake. The remake wasn't even the bad. The first one was good because it was, you know, that gritty. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. just... Girls screaming everywhere. Yeah. Well, like, well, no, 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 no. He's talking no, about the just, remake. No, 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 no. I'm talking, oh, you're about, talking about the original. original. Oh, okay. I you don't know, like the original. It was, it was gritty. <laughs> Terrible. But they get like better though. Thirteenth because of the kills. So <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. Back off the camera. So um, then you know we grew up loving the second one, mm-hmm. and then we watched it, and they were and like, like, eh, eh. <laughs> not so, so much. Yeah. The third one. It's okay. I haven't seen it, so I don't and fucking then, know. Like, I don't think I've seen it. Well, seen this from one. what I remember, it's okay. And then the fourth one was complete dog shit. And then the I remake, the one I think, good. with Jessica Beals. Yeah. I like you know, that one. That was good. Yeah. And then, you know. The one after that, which was, I think, a prequel to the remake. That one was uh, good. One, I think. I think the, the I think so the there was sequel, the remake and then I there, think was, there was a, the 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 uh, remake I think there was a sequel and I think the third one out of that was a prequel was there a sequel I think because I'm thinking that there was a prequel and then that was it yeah you might be right but I'm thinking there was the remake and then they did a prequel to the remake which was about those two guys trying to dip out of the draft during Vietnam oh, it's been so and uh because i know that uh um fuck what's his name um god damn it uh full metal jacket arlie army arlie army is in the is he in was both in the prequel. Of them. he was in the prequel but he was also he was in the he was in the, the remake too he was in the remake and then he was in the prequel one but he was only in the prequel one for a hot minute i think because I remember him being in the prequel. No, no he was he a big part of the prequel. Well, yeah, because like that was the one where they're talking about. Um, uh, You're thinking of 3D. Texas Chainsaw 3D with uh, Alexandria Daddario, where um, she comes back, realizes that she's his cousin. Yeah. Maybe that's the one you're thinking yeah, of. That maybe. takes place in modern day. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know, man. There's so many of these fucking movies. And their timeline is... Everywhere. All over the place. Because yeah. the remake, there's the remake with Jessica Biel, and then there's the prequel with um, Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, the Saturday prequel has Friday the girl 14th. from the Fast and the Furious movies. She was also on the Faculty. Um, darker complected, long brown, dark brown hair, or whatever. I don't remember her name, but she plays uh, the main. She plays uh, Dom's sister in the Fast and Furious movies. Oh shit! She's in the prequel. <laughs> She plays the one dude, the the one of the guys who's trying to ditch out on the dip out on the draft. Plays his girlfriend or whatever. I don't. Yeah, but like those two movies, like the 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 remake and that prequel, are in my opinion are very good. Yeah, I, I remember those the prequel good being movies. good. Yeah, and then even the te- the Texas Chainsaw 3D could have been better. I just thought that the fucking story itself was dumb, and the whole uh, get him cuz I thought that was fucking retarded. Uh, and then after that, there was, um, or before that, actually, there was um, Leatherface, which was that prequel about them as kids, mm-hmm. which was also fucking retarded. That movie was boring as shit. I don't remember that. Uh, and then there was. Um, I remember when it came out. I didn't watch. I remember seeing the trailers and stuff, but I didn't watch it. I watched it, and I thought it was dumb. You got to pee. Yeah. Wait, well, we're almost at the end. 
He's like, I thought that was going to be the ago. most is the second week I was gone, you guys watched the fucking one movie I wanted to do a review on. And the week I come back, I come <laughs> back to this bullshit. <laughs> what movie did we do that you wanted Army to do? Army of Darkness, damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, you even said that. You're like, Eric's going to be pissed. I did too. I was like, oh, Eric's going to be pissed. We loved Army of Darkness, though, didn't we, Karen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway, next week we're doing, uh, I forgot Fuck already. Face. Leather oh, face. Leather, no, not Leatherface. Yeah. Like Texas Chainsaw. Leatherface. Hold on, let me pull fuck it up. Your yeah, fuck your face. Yeah, fuck your face. This movie's called Leatherface? Yes. It's called Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Three. Oh, okay, okay. Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. <laughs> Look at me. Don't I'm ask me why <laughs> we're doing it. I think it's, uh, um, I don't think I've ever seen this movie. I don't think I have. I don't either. think I have, honestly. I know I haven't seen all the Texas Chainsaw. Movies. I've seen all I of them except haven't. for apparently this one. Can we can we give negative ratings? I'm just yeah. I'm curious. You can. You never know. You might go into this movie like this actually wasn't that bad. I know after after four, been, after the next generation they get better. I have not been because even the newest one that came out on Netflix was good. I liked it a lot actually. I a didn't lot of see people, that one. A lot either. of people hate it. I'm like, why do you hate this movie? I hear it's exactly crazy. what you want out of a fucking uh, Leatherface movie. He's chainsaw. He's hacking people up. It's fucking gory. It's fun. Do you want people to just stand there and like get stabbed? Like no, in I Friday just don't want to hear movies? somebody screaming for twenty goddamn That's minutes. That's all they do in the Friday the Thirteenth. They, they either <laughs> stand the there and like and get stabbed, or they get fucked and get stabbed. They yeah, or they get <laughs> fucked and get stabbed, or they fall into the the mud. 20 damn times. And crawl instead of getting back up. <laughs> and right. like no! 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 It's so Sorry. dumb. Anyway, till next week, we love you all. And don't forget to check out all our socials <sighs> and all that down there. Oh, fuck me. This is going to be... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, just come check us out on Discord. Uh, we'll talk about it down there. Anyway, till next week, we went way over. We love you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>